Hey, this is Red Band coming to you live from Better Box Studios for another episode of Kill Tony. Here's Tony Hinchcliffe. Hello, everybody. We are back here at Better Box Studios for another episode of Kill Tony. Hi, Brian Red Band. Hey, Tony Hinchcliffe. How are you doing? I'm good. You know, uh, next week or the week after that is our, I believe, seven-year anniversary of doing this show. I know. We're going to have to have a party as soon as we can. A pizza party, perhaps, pizza from our party. good friends over at Vito's Pizza. The great sure. Charlie is here in studio um, we had more delicious pizza today available everywhere in Southern California. It's kind of ruined my pizza game. Like, like I, I want to have pizza like in like a Thursday. I don't and eat I'm pizza. Like, <laughs> the whole <laughs> pandemic. Uh, the only pizza I eat is Vito's pizza. Yeah, same here. I, I'll look at the other places because as we all know, I'm, we're, all, we're all big Postmates people here at Kill Tony. But I'm telling you, I skip over all the pizza places. I had uh, pineapple fried rice today. Oh. Chicken. Actually, no, it was a pineapple curry with chicken today. Nice. Um, from our good friends over at Postmates, knowing that I was going to have pizza for dinner. Gino's also here, the lord of Better Box Studios, which has been gracious enough and amazing during this crazy pandemic times to let us uh, hole up in here every Monday. And they have a lot of good shows here, too. They have the, you know, our good friend Brian Moses does yep. it, and, and Frank. Roast but, Battle. Yeah. The great Josh Wolf, who's been on this show, has controlled chaos. Uh, Jay Light has a great movie podcast. Um, and uh, they also have Damn Good Candle Company here, which yeah. we've uh, been getting tagged in some of, uh, in one, I, I think, I, in some of their uh posts. I saw somebody got one of your candles. Yeah. yeah. Pin hinch me, I'm dreaming. That's hilarious. You can get your candle at damngoodco.com. Tag the Kill Tony Show account in your Instagram stories, and the Kill Tony Show account will repost it. So much fun stuff happening. We're getting back on the road. I'm headlining shows along with some Kill Tonys in Miami, Florida, July 31st and August 1st. Boston, August 13th, two Kill Tonys. Tony Hinchcliffe on the 14th and 15th. When I say Tony Hinchcliffe, that means stand-up show. Stand-up. Houston, Texas, August 20th. Four uh, Kill Tonys, the 20th and 21st. Back to Houston, the record-holding city of the most Kill Tonys other than Los Angeles. Fun fact. Dallas, Texas, the 27th. Fort Worth, August 28th and 29th, right after that. So that's all in August. September, Salt Lake City. That's a great place. Moon Tower in Austin, Kill Tony, uh, September 17th. Toronto at the Queen Elizabeth Theater just added, September whoa. 29th. Um, Where's that at? Toronto, oh, Canada. Nice. I love Toronto. Tembler Brewing Company in Bakersfield, October 13th. That's a really fun joint. That's all on the road to Kill Tony Mania. October 13th, Bakersfield. 14th and 15th, Sacramento. 16th, 17th, and 18th, San Francisco. That's Kill Tony every single night that week from Monday to Monday. Fun. October 30th, Tacoma, Washington. D.C. in November. It's all happening. Man, can't, can't wait. Stop us. Can't wait to go back on the road. You ain't fucking lying. <laughs> I just found out I'm doing gigs next month. Top, oh, yeah? Top secret gigs in um in a city in, a in city. Texas with someone that uh, that we know okay. and work with that nice. is very popular. He's been in the news as of late. Mm. Um, he is a prominent comedian mm. and podcaster. Mm. Mm. Um, mm. The email to submit to Kill Tony is killtonyquarantine at gmail.com. That's important to do. My recommendation is submit a few times. You know, why not? Make the videos fun, too. You yeah. don't have to just do straight stand-up. Have fun with it. Have fun with it. Stuff's right. wackadoodle. No one wants to see you talking in your closet about sad shit with a camera down below your way. Hey, who cares? <laughs> Hey, let me ask you listeners something. Did you know that two out of three guys will experience some form of male pattern baldness by the time they're 35? The best way to prevent hair loss is to do something about it while you still have hair left. You know, you used to have to go to a doctor's office and get a prescription from the doctor. Mm -hmm. Now, thanks to Keeps, you can visit a doctor online, get hair loss medication delivered right to your home. They make it easy. They deliver it every three months. It's all on a routine. So you can say goodbye to your pharmacy. You don't have to go there during this crazy time and awkward doctor visit, visits and just have it all sent to you. Thanks to the great people over at Keeps. You know about this. Yeah, it's great. Actually, I got my dad onto this uh, because he, you know, he's an older guy and uh, he wanted to, get, you know, see if he could do anything with his hair. So I walked him through it and it was very easy. 
we, he did it on his cell phone. You could just, he did it on his iPhone and it has you pick a couple questions, you know, uh, like it shows like what kind of uh, baldness do you have? Like, do you have like the, my kind of baldness where it's going down in here or you're getting one in the back and you just answer a couple questions and you talk to a real doctor online and get prescribed real medicine and uh, to help your hair loss. And it comes in a discreet package, so no one knows what you're getting. Uh, it's great, it was really fast. It probably took my dad maybe three, five minutes to do the whole thing, and then it was he was prescribed almost the next day. Easy breezy, beautiful. <laughs> if you're ready to take action and prevent your hair loss, go to keeps.com slash kill to receive your first month of treatment for free, free. Boop, boop, boop. That's K E E P S dot com slash kill. One more time. That's K E E P S dot com slash kill. That's what you got to do. Yep. You got to take care of yourself. You know, they're, they're great. They're getting big too. I see a lot of commercials for it. Yeah. I'm everywhere. They're doing great stuff over there. And uh, another one of our favorite sponsors of all time, one mm. that I use all the time, the great Express VPN. Yes. Um, you know, they are great to protect your privacy and security. But I've been using Express VPN. I mean, I blasted through Netflix's The Last Dance. They have a deal where you can, you know, where it's a international. So you can't watch it on Netflix in America, but you can watch it from other places. It takes three seconds to reset your location and you can watch amazing things. You know, net, a lot, not a lot of people don't know this, but Netflix is different in every country in, diff, in different areas and uh, ExpressVPN gets you right into all these amazing things. Um, it's so simple to do. You just fire it up, change your location, and it hides your IP address and lets you control the sites uh, that you're going to and where it looks like you're at. You can choose from almost 100 different countries. So just think about all the Netflix libraries you can go through. Yeah, and it's, it's not just Netflix. Like It, it works uh, with any streaming service like Hulu, you know, YouTube, you name it. And if you like anime, oh my God, you could use that ExpressVPN to access Japanese Netflix and, and you could get like spirited away. You get, get a lot of things that we don't have on our uh, Netflix here in the US. There are hundreds of VPNs out there, but the reason I use ExpressVPN to watch shows, it's, it's ridiculously fast. A lot of these VPNs, sure, they work the same, but they're not as fast. Like you'll be struggling, like why am I even using this? So there's no lag, you can stream HD, no problem. It's also compatible with all your devices, phones, media, consoles, smart TVs, and more. So you can watch what you want on a personal device or the big screen, wherever you are. That's right, and if you visit our special link right now at ExpressVPN, dot com slash kill tony you get an extra three months of express vpn for free ooh, ooh, ooh. free support the show watch what you want and protect yourself with express vpn at expressvpn.com slash kill tony yeah there's a toilet paper shortage Everyone has an ass. Everyone deserves the gift of tushy. Wiping your butt with dry toilet paper does not remove all the shit. If you got poop on any other part of your body, would you wipe it off with paper? Hell no. Water cleans better than dry paper, my friends. Thankfully, there's now a sleek bidet attachment that clips onto your existing toilet and my existing toilet. And mine, yeah. And sprays your butt completely clean with fresh water. It's called tushy, and it's the best thing you could do for your butt. Uh, tushy sprays directly to your ass and it removes the poop completely so you aren't sitting on bacteria that leads to nasty things like hemorrhoids or yeast infections. Trust me, I have all those things in the past. Right. UTIs, itchy assholes, or skid marks. Bidets are common in the rest of the world. A bidet saves you money on toilet paper. You still use a, like a little toilet paper to like pat yourself dry, you know, clear the little teardrop but it won't clog your toilets. Tushy sprays your ass with fresh water. It's not toilet water. A lot of people think it's like oh. gross water. Tushy connects to the water supply behind your toilet to spray your dirty parts with clean, fresh water. It's the same water you brush your teeth with. Yes, it is. <laughs> wet wipes are the worst than toilet paper. A lot of people think wet wipes are okay to uh, flush. They aren't. They're actually horrible for the environment. They cause anal fissures. You don't want your anus fissuring, Tony. And the most amazing part is this life of luxury is only $79. Go to hellotushy.com slash kill Tony, all one word, and get 10% off your order. That's hellotushy.com slash kill Tony. And it really, it takes like 
six minutes to hook up? Like, I mean, how easy was it? It's, it's like, a no brainer. Boom, boom, two things. It's a no brainer. We have the best sponsors we in do. the world. We do. In the world. We get to pick them. We got a list that they send to us. Hey, you like this? You want this? You want this? You want this? We believe in our sponsors. Mm -hmm. Love it. And uh, speak of the devil. Speak of the fun of this show. The great Ryan J. Ebelt yeah. is here, ladies and gentlemen, sitting at a desk. How you doing, Ryan? Hard at work. He's got his own microphone. This is the life we're living here at <laughs> Better Box Studios. We got clean asses, pizza for days, privacy. We got it all. And speaking of hair, look at that hair. Yeah. <laughs> Ryan's been on Keeps for a while. Yeah. He's actually the founder. I'm, I'm in zero danger. Yeah, you look That's like right. a '70s Kenny Rogers. Over yeah, there. you look like the uh, <laughs> you look like the dad from uh, Teen Wolf. That's right. Oh, we did that. Yeah, I did that last cool. week. <laughs> I guess you could tell I watched Teen Wolf a week and a half ago. <laughs> yeah. And uh, along with Ryan J, who we're gonna check in with later because he's drawing tonight's episode, of course, and uh, all of his prints, all the T-shirts, all the posters, RyanJBelt.com, and uh, click on Kill Tony, right? And that's how they uh, find everything. Just head to the shop and it's all there. That's right. Click the shop button. I love pe seeing people's collections on the posters. People yeah. like get them framed. And there's a lot of so cool collections. Cool. Uh, my entire uh, place is covered with uh, Kill Tony artwork. I brought a few of them here yeah. to decorate this stu studio up a little bit. And I have another one that's going to the frame store tomorrow. Uh, but with no further ado, let's get into the show. We have a band here, as always this week. Um, the great Jeremiah Watkins is on a little trip, taking the night off. However, the two other members are here, and it is the return of one of them that just missed a couple weeks. He's back on a lovely Memorial Day. Ladies and gentlemen, always in character. We don't know what they're going to be. They were sweating bullets getting ready for this 10 minutes before the show. I present to you the best damn band in the land. It's the Kill Tony Band. Joel Berg, Joel Jimenez, and Jet Ski, Jesse Johnson. Here they come. Oh, oh wow. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Oh, my goodness. They are cats. Oh, they're, I thought they were special needs. Oh, no, they're cats. Oh, a special needs cat. This is exciting. Hello, kitties. Yes. Hello, what's your name? My name is Elliot. I am a cat. And if you know anything about ancient Egypt, you would have been worshipping me back in the day, so suck it. Wow. Also, this bitch has been following me around all day. Yeah, what's your name? Hi, I'm Parker. Are you, are you a dog? <laughs> you are? Obviously, you can't smell her. <laughs> oh, Parker. Welcome, Parker. How I'm are you? fascinated by this cat. <laughs> oh, okay. Jesus, she won't leave me alone. God There's damn it. Like Let me... fur and dust kicking up over here. You guys are dirty dogs and cats. <laughs> I'm so confused. I hate Wait, that. why are you following him around? <laughs> I had a taste of his shit earlier. <laughs> oh. <laughs> this idiot. This, this idiot ate a magnet, and so now her owner has put this stupid cone on her. Yes, she thought I, since it was stuck to the refrigerator that it was edible. Obviously not, idiot. Wow. I had a baguette. I had a baguette. Uh, it was a good day. I love <laughs> it. I, love it. I said we can't say that word anymore. I've never seen a dog with a... <laughs> baguette. We don't say that anymore. I've never seen a dog with the beard of a wizard before. <laughs> you know what's funny is, as time goes on during this quarantine, the band is reverting to its original wave of the belly room before budget because we can't go to stores and buy stuff. So we just have to like make do with what we have. I... Very rarely do I see a cat with a collar on, too. It's actually a special release collar in case I get trapped because I'm very agile and I could get caught in a fence or something. All right, let's get the show started. We got Elliot and Parker. We have a dog, a cat. We have everybody here. And uh, let's meet some strangers, shall we? Let's see what happens this week on another episode of Kill Tony where people send in a minute while they're deep in quarantine from perhaps different places in the world. And... Uh, I don't know. We don't really judge them like they're stand-up comedians. It's a little bit of a break from the normal format of the show. The stakes are definitely nowhere near as high. Did However, you say stakes? No. Oh, you like steak? You're a cat. I didn't realize I would expect a dog. Do you you ever heard of a salmon steak? Oh, my God. Salmon, beef, whatever. Steaks uh, are Shut up, bitch. Wow. Back to you in the studio, Tony. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Elliot. Um, so... 
Let's just jump right into it. Your first uh, human being that su submitted a minute tonight goes by the name of Nico Medina. Here we go. Here's Nico Medina. So, uh, I like to talk about something that shouldn't be happening in 2020. Something that's not right. I don't think it's okay or fair that my face cannot grow hair as thoroughly or aggressively as my fucking butthole. Um, up top, it's like, if, I don't know if you could see well, it's like loose wrist hairs and spider legs got taped on my face. And then down below, it's like the Amazon before it did or did not burn down. It's not, uh, it's not on my feed on Instagram. I don't know. Um, so my mom is white. And my dad's Colombian. Um, it's interesting. It's fucked up, though, because my dad didn't teach us Spanish. It's not okay. Even worse off. My mom never let us take bath salts and parade in the streets, fighting, cutting people's heads off naked. <laughs> wow. Nico, you're covering your face. You seem... What's going on over there? Tell us what's going on with your emotions right now. <laughs> this, it's, it's overloaded right now. Sorry. Uh, <laughs> I was just a little bit... Uh, just watching it back and then watching you watch it back. And it's just like, oh, yeah, that's what it was. Anyways. Yeah, you shouldn't watch us watch it back. Yeah, close your eyes. A little piece of advice for <laughs> people during these quarantine episodes. You already know what you're going to do. You don't, want, you don't want to watch us watch it back. Yeah. Um, welcome, Nico. How's it going? You in Florida? Oh, no, no. Uh, my mom's in Florida. I'm in Maryland. Oh, okay. Maryland. All right. Well, why, why, why Maryland? Is that where you were born and raised? Oh, yeah. I was born in D.C., family moved to Virginia, moved to Maryland. And I kind of stuck around. Okay. What do you do? Uh, well, I was a roofer. I got furloughed. So, uh, been about six weeks, I think now. Wow. They have white. Uh... Oh, what are you? What's your ethnicity? Oh, I'm half Colombian, half white. Okay. Nice. All right. I'm not... Hey, that's a dog. I know, so I know something else white that's from Colombia. <laughs> Just saying. <laughs> oh, wow. You dirty, <laughs> you dirty cat, Elliot. Do you live in a brewery or what's going on with that sign back uh, there? Uh, no, I uh, I do a lot of Discord chats and I uh, my buddy gave me this sign and I was like, I'll just throw it back there. What do you chat about? Oh, it's a great... I mean, that's really the only way I get any social interaction nowadays is like Discord parties and servers and stuff. And we just literally, like Fridays and Saturdays, we'll like hang out and just all join a server and just like shoot the shit and just kind of maybe game every now and then. But yeah. It's yeah, it's great. That's, that's what I've been doing too. I love hanging out in Discord, especially now with the video chat. We have a bunch of people, Kill Tony fans that mm -hmm. all get together. It's like a hundred fans that are all watching like VR. And I VR. heard of Discord before, but this week I actually had to set one up for the first time ever because I have a top secret project I'm releasing one week from today oh, yeah. um, that has a such a crazy infrastructure built into it that there's actually its own special discord to it and i had to i had to i had to have the young bucks here around better box the great gage tiarina and anthony mr underscore strange taste and is it strange taste underscore son of a bitch i i, uh, I am 0 for 11 on plugging here i uh one time i ate a lizard and that had a strange taste to it back to you very good elliot um uh, <laughs> and they had to teach me all about discord yeah, so i'm like it's pretty powerful i don't know what happened the last five years maybe i guess i don't know the overwhelming amount of work that i've been lucky enough to get but i've like become an old man when it comes to everything I remember, technology i remember yelling at you to get an instagram back in the day where i was like, yeah. remember that? <laughs> like yeah. you have to do i've it, always man. been like <laughs> ugh. and now it's like now it's instagram's the only half decent one and twitter i'm literally like oh what yeah. is even going on over here yeah. it's yeah. funny they all just fall in line i've been off facebook for years now thank god Fuck facebook. thank dog now, I would love to hear more about that lizard. No, we're going to keep it. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. 
Jesus, relax. <laughs> Elliot, be nice. I am You're a female, cat. though. She's a fem she's, it's oh. actually a scientific term, if you know this. Also, I appreciate the manatees on your shirt. It's very... Yeah, the sea cow. Shirt. I heard that oh, back you. in the day, sailors thought those were actually mermaids, and that is where the, the legend of mermaids actually began. That's a fat bitch! I don't know what's <laughs> happening right now. This is one of those moments, if you're wondering, where it's like, I wonder if Tony knows what's happening right now. Nope. I am a special needs cat. Wow. Elliot coming out guns a blazing with the foot on the pedal at a thousand miles an hour here during Nico Medina, our first comedian of the night. <laughs> uh, anyway, so uh, Nico, tell us something interesting about you that uh, that, uh, that we would find interesting. Um, let's see. Uh, I played spin the bottle with two dudes and a girl once, and oh, I... how'd that go? <laughs> tell us more. This is great. Uh, I think I went. I think I went one and four to kiss the girl. <laughs> so uh, it was a weird, well, was a weird half hour. One and four. <laughs> yeah. I think our one and fours are different because I'd be hoping for the dudes because I'm yeah, a gay man. Right. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a gay man. It's so much funnier when you do it. I know. <laughs> I know. I flipped the script. <laughs> it's so good. I flipped the script on everybody. That's a good bit that you could write, though. That's a there's a funny premise right there. Yeah. Yeah, I wish I thought about that uh, before I recorded uh, whatever that was. So yeah, next time. Dude, sure. no, it's good. Now you know. May I talk? Sure, yes, Elliot. One time when I was at the pound, I touched tongues with another male cat just to see two of the girl cats touch tongues. Totally worth it. Unlike this last thing I just said. Back to you in the studio, Tony. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> My goodness. Two weeks off for Elliot. He's finding his pawing right now. I always land on my feet. That's right. That one belongs in the litter box. I would like to hear more about these. Kids. No. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. Oh, my God. What a weird combo, you guys. Yeah, oh, one thing I wanted to mention, you had asked something interesting about me. I also, I, I spaced on this because that other story was more interesting. No, it's, it wasn't. I, I've been playing drums for like 15 years or so. Mm. Oh. Wow. wow, 15 years, huh? Ish, yeah, give or take. My goodness. Is your drum set far away from you? It's 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 right next to me, actually. Is it really? Is it behind that giant sign? No, no it's, it's literally right here. Here, show us. Ah. Oh, wow. Why don't you play yeah. us a little 30 second, a uh, little 30 second something. Let's see here what you got. These drum, yep. these drums, these drum solos during the quarantine have been, as, uh, as Parker would say, complete dog shit. So. They've been rough. I also, I also thought... <laughs> You stupid go bitch. Ahead. I also ahead, thought Elliot. maybe like when they're doing this, maybe this is an audition to have a, a golden ticket to a drum off the next time we're in their oh, city. Yeah. Is that are those electric drums? Those are Roland's. Oh, yeah, they're uh, TD seventeens. Yeah, that's... Roland TD seventeens. That's what I was about to say. That's cool. All right, here we go. Here's a little bit of the drums from um from Parker. <laughs> we we can't or not Parker from Nico. Oh, I hope yeah. I turned it on. Sorry. Let me know if you hear this really quick. Well, All right, he's going to see if we can hear it. Yeah. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. Uh, God right. sucks. Yeah. Oh, shit. Wow. That's awesome, man. That sounds awesome. That's incredible. That's great. Well, you got the I job. You won, so. Yeah, you won. <laughs> I could do a quick you won. It wasn't quick, a Mexican quick. drum. It was a Colombian drum off. Yeah. Right. <laughs> which means you get absolutely nothing. <laughs> this guy knows how to pull some strings over here. Can I do a quick 30 seconds really quick? That sure. That was just a little test. test little yeah, go ahead. Wow. Very impressive. Says the person who knows nothing about drumming. Oh, okay. <laughs> Very nicely done. <laughs> if anybody knows anything about electronic drums, they know that there are 
trigger sensor so that every hit is actually at the same tempo and wow. it doesn't really matter. It all sounds very equal and maybe you'd like to come and challenge me on an acoustic set. <laughs> Jesus <Damn>. Christ. <laughs> yeah, he maybe does you have could a point. grow some hair on your balls as well as your face and come see me the next time we're in Florida. Oh my God. You have God. a big dick, yes. <laughs> I do have a giant penis okay, for a okay. cat. All right, sorry. Okay, Elliot. Wait, thank he's you in, so much. Wait, he, where is he at? He's, he's not in Florida. He's, he's in, in Maryland. Maryland. Maryland, yeah. Man, I'm going to see a drum off now. Wow, with this guy. Maryland yeah. Manson well, himself. You know what? Uh, just because uh, just because we're uh, a little bit extra nice during these quarantine episodes and extra giving, you got to remind me of this when it comes up. But in November, we're going to be in D.C. doing a Kill Tony, and uh, we'll give you an automatic 60 seconds. You can tell us your spin the bottle story, and uh, we'll have a real drum off there. You can get behind Joel's drums, and we'll have a, uh, a real Mexican drum off in the capital of the greatest country in the world, the United States of America. How about that, Nico? That sounds perfect. That sounds Look at him. amazing. He just changed his entire life. Yeah, just send Tony a, a message before the yeah. show or. The show. Yep, that would be fun. It'll be it'll be good uh, to put you down a little bit, Joel. I can't wait. Hey, <laughs> hey that's not that. funny. I'm a cat. Nobody puts me down. Hey, you're not putting me down. There's, there's a joke in character. I like you that. fucking bitch. <laughs> All right, her, not you. I'll see you later. There bye. goes Nico Medina. He's job, on Instagram Nico. at tbp nico n i k o. Your next comedian. Your next submission goes by the name of Rye Matson. So here's Rye, everybody. Rye Madison. Here we go. So now they're warning us about murder hornets. I'd like to recommend some other bullshit animals for possible media fear-mongering. Manslaughter mantis, bubonic bees, gremlins, but from normal-sized bears, staphylococcus stingrays, brain worms, unfriendly Mormons, subway fungus, <laughs> lug nut recall, evangelical jihadists, sewer snakes, toe fleas and samsung epilepsy if those don't work i've also got some dangerous political ideologies to be afraid of the 12.6 percenters iggy poppians ironic racism flotectionists the foreskin reclamation movement bill berbers dad and mommyism the global body modification coalitionists of sebastopol florida and lauren hill's movement for the miseducation of indigenous peoples there's a lot to be scared of out there, media folks. I'm just disappointed with your lack of murder mantis creativity. Yeah. That's Rye Matson. Hi, Rye. Hey, guys. How are you? Can you, you? Me, right? How's it going, buddy? Good, good. I'm good. all right, man. I love it. Where are you at? I'm in Istanbul, Turkey. Really? Mm, turkey. <laughs> oh, because you got the animals. Yes. You got the animals all riled up. Wow. <laughs> There's a lot of street cats here and dogs. Damn. You love it. How much do they charge? <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Jesus, Elliot. <laughs> what is wrong with you? I said I'm a special needs what, cat. You fart? You <laughs> fart? You're a farting cat? <laughs> what? Farts don't come from the mouth. That was me blowing a raspberry. Oh, oh. but if they could. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. <laughs> so, uh, Rye, why are you in Turkey? My wife is Turkish. I got married last year, but I've been coming okay. here for about three years. Okay. And, uh... So how'd you meet your wife? I met my wife in Alaska. Whoa. Jeez Louise. So you were a crab fisherman? Yeah. No, not crab. Salmon. Oh. Actually, I think when we met, I was... <laughs> yeah. I love it. We have a cat in studio today. So he's a hyperactive special needs cat, which is just great. Yeah, it's exactly him. what I was hoping his tone would be. Mm -hmm. I always tell the band before the show like just be as obnoxious as possible especially early on to start the episode um so that's what he's doing <laughs> so uh what does your wife do um she's a nutritionist uh yoga instructor gymnastics instructor all that hot girl stuff fuck so. yeah i was surprised man i saw i got some laughs out of you guys i was like man that's such a hacky bit uh this uh this murder hornet garbage but 
I mean, I'm really not a, a stand-up comedian. I've done stand-up a couple times. I did it one time here in Turkey. They have like an English language comedy night because uh, apparently it's like not really like uh, popular to do stand-up in Turkish because it gets uh, political, I guess. So <laughs> instead, they were all just doing like super racist stand-up comedy in English, which is interesting. So. Sounds like a blast. <laughs> Sign me it up. Was yeah. Who, who <laughs> are they exactly time. racist against in Turkey? Yeah, what, what are their least favorite I don't know, races? And, I don't know, and I don't ask, man. I'm a guest in this country as far as I'm concerned. They're probably monitoring this transmission, right? So right. I'm just uh, taking it you. easy here. We gotta get you right. an Express VPN for mm -hmm. sure. <laughs> <laughs> so that's fun. So what do you do now? Uh, here I teach English mostly. Um, normally I'd be going back to Alaska in May, but there's still really no flights. So I'll probably just wind up spending the summer here, which is cool. I mean, we go like snorkeling and Greek ruins and shit down in the South. It's pretty dope. So, man, that is awesome. I actually have a friend uh, from grade school that lives in Turkey. Do you know Karim Sadiq Targul by any chance? I know like five of him, dude. Oh, perfect. Yeah, like everyone's name. Is perfect. Curry, Tell all five that Tony here, says bro. hello. I right, love right. that. So what else, what, how long have you been in Turkey now? Um, this time I've been here about seven months. Okay. What's the temperature like mm -hmm. there? What's the climate and stuff? I see there's a lot of bugs. Nice. I've seen I mean, a couple flies. It's, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's kind of like North Carolina or something. It's pretty temperate. It's nice. Mm -hmm. if, you could, if you go down, down to the south, it's like... It's hot, but it's like a little bit dry. It's not really like a desert. I don't know how to explain it. It's like it's like New Mexico by the sea or something, man. It's weird. Like a Mediterranean climate is what you're trying to say. <laughs> okay. All right. Fine, Gilbert. Why do you look Super like funny. if William Montgomery was a UFC fighter? Yeah, he got his shit together. William got his shit together. <laughs> you look like if William I'll, Montgomery I'll joined that, like, the Church of Jocko Willink or something like that. I will take that, bro. <laughs> William started drinking pure one. water. <laughs> really? That's Can we hilarious. join him in? Good. You think I'm scared of that guy? It's too, maybe it's too many. <laughs> Is that too much? Yeah, probably. Is that crossover? Is that impossible? Is William here? Oh, okay. Let me say hi to Willie, bro. <laughs> He's no, watching we, right now. He's laughing. We can't have you both on at the same time. It's going to be a smooth transition, though. Now, what you wrote was, right, was, right, was pretty uh, pretty funny. Uh, it did seem like, it, uh, did you write that, or was this like an email that somebody sent you, like my dad or something, or did you oh. write it? <laughs> no, I, I wrote that, but I could see why you would say, like, yeah, that's some internet joke that somebody sent right. you or something. Totally true. Like, well, that was, I definitely that was like, don't have a lot of jokes. So I appreciate that. I saw you guys laughing. I was like, I'm getting jokes. I'm getting laughs, man. That was good. So it was yeah, cool. Yeah, that's, what, that's but all. But I, I got to say, like, I definitely, I definitely was like, like, uh, you know, channeling William Montgomery, you know, he's like, um, like I, I actually, I think I sent something to William on, um, uh, on Instagram. Like, you know, my favorite William Montgomery joke is, uh, the squirrels joke during uh world war two or whatever. Oh yeah. <laughs> and I sent him like, I was trying to pitch William, like some, some jokes about like uh, possible movie I, scripts or whatever. Cause I think that was so hilarious. And he actually responded to me. So I thought, I thought that was pretty cool, but um, wow. William, yeah, I mean, the... you know, he really like it, when I started watching you guys, like it was probably like uh, at the Malcolm Hatchet days. And uh, oh, yeah. but when I saw William come on, man, I got addicted to the show and I, I definitely like get inspired by William stuff. So, yeah, William's a fucking genius, man. It's unbelievable. Mm -hmm. This is definitely, you know, Arguably our strongest uh, class of regulars by far, perhaps. I mean, not perhaps, actually, definitely. It's our strongest class of regulars ever. They take it super seriously. They're a real, we have a real little cult following. Things are good over at uh, Brothers in Cursive, right? Oh, yeah, it's great. Especially after the show yeah. when William's really, really drunk and he doesn't want to leave the studio and David leaves me with him. And, uh,. <laughs> It takes me about like 40 minutes to get out of there because he's just like, Brian, one more cigarette. You yeah. know, it's six. Um, so I love it, man. It was nice to meet you. Thanks for submitting, Rye. And we're going to roll right into your man, William job, Montgomery, man. right now. There goes Rye Matson. Right. Nice to meet you guys. Peace. He's on Twitter at Murder Mantis. And we're going to roll. You guys can keep playing. We're going to roll right into William Montgomery. There he is. Whoa. Rye Matson, why'd you say all that bullshit, dude? 
What happened to your eyebrows? We talked, we Go, talked ahead, about that. Go ahead, William. Take Elliot, the floor for a little bit. You, uh, I'm a big Jay-Z fan, specifically Hard Knock Life. That's all I listen to. Uh, I'm in a tub up to six hours a day now. It's not funny. It's no joke. I have a diabetic dog. Hey, Tony, do you think Red Band's ever seen Pete's Dragon? Uh, met my girlfriend at the X Games. Uh, she was a half pipe. Joe Biden's so old, he can't remember where he buried those kids' bodies. <laughs> okay, there's a minute from William Montgomery. How are y'all doing? I love it, man. Some jokes. I love you've kept writing. I, don't, I didn't really get like any of them, but <laughs> but they probably would have gotten laughs in front of a big sold out crowd like a normal Monday. What's Pete's yeah, Dragon? I don't get it. It's a great. Uh, the, well, at least the original one was a great movie. Uh, a movie. Yeah, a hell of a movie. But, you know, it, it, it sucks because a lot of people don't know about Pete's Dragon because it came out the same day as Star Wars. Can you imagine wow. releasing a movie the same day Star Wars, the first Star Wars ever came out? But wow. they remade I don't it think some that's correct. Reason. I don't think that's correct. It is. It came out in 1977. I heard Pete the Dragon Part 2 came out the same day as Mandalorian, which is better than all of the Star Wars movie in the whole this world. This is true. Yes, absolutely. And uh, your girlfriend being a half pipe, explain that one to us, William. I went to an X Games in uh, uh, Tampa, Florida, uh, five years ago, and I met this really nice girl. Uh, I'd been drinking some. I, I started kissing her, and I realized I was kissing the side of this wooden structure. It turns out it was a half pipe. Uh, Are your eyes closed? Are you a samurai warrior or something? What What's happening on? right now? Y'all see that? I don't know what is going on. It's not good. <laughs> And the difference between your <laughs> eyes and eyebrows last week to this week yeah. is incredible. <laughs> you look like you own a Chinese restaurant or something. <laughs> Albino Bobby Lee. Or yeah. Chicken. <laughs> or chicken. chicken. <laughs> yes. That's the first funny thing you've ever said, you dumb, stupid dog. <laughs> wow. Hell yes. Oh, no. <sighs> oh, oh, my no. goodness. If yeah, you were, I can't open it, up it, if you were a food while orange chicken is on the table, uh, oh wait, who's that? Hold on. Who was that? That's uh. That's his girlfriend. His girlfriend, his parents or uh, grandparents. I want William to tell me no, who was that, was William. What? Come on, it's my uncle. It's my uncle. I'm back in Memphis. Come on. Okay. <laughs> wow, you have the exact same shed as last week. Anyway, um. So, if you were a food, if you were a food, what food would you be? Probably a hard-boiled egg. <laughs> yeah. Explain to us why you consider yourself a hard-boiled egg. Because it, get, it gets to Easter time, and everybody knows I, I'm a follower of Jesus, and we end up boiling some eggs for the Easter egg hunt, and... We accidentally make some of them hard boiled and let's talk about your eyes again for a second. <laughs> are they are they are they are they is something wrong? Are you allergic to something? Yeah, are you having a yeah, food? I hope not. Tell us. Tell us <laughs> what you think it is, William. I got stung in the head uh, by a wasp earlier. <laughs> 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 no, I did. Seriously, I got stung in the face Where? by a wasp. Where in the head did you get stung? <laughs> Both eyes. Right there? <laughs> my goodness. I got he stung right happy. here earlier by a wasp. I can't open my fucking eyes. So I gotta tell drive us... tonight. I gotta go far tonight. Yeah, where are you driving to tonight? Uh, some drug dealing deal, whatever, in Inglewood. Yeesh. Okay, what kind of drugs are you dealing? Ecstasies. <laughs> Oh my God! Are you sure you didn't take it already? He looks the happiest. I've yeah, I know. He looks like he is <laughs> fucked up right now. Like he's he got those no, I'm not, eyes. No, I'm not. My parents watch this. My parents watch this. I'm not. Well, your parents are gonna. Those. Your parents are gonna wonder the same thing while your eyes are closed during this episode. 
Getting stung in the head by a wasp is not necessarily a believable story. Right. I guess stung in the face. Yeah, well, you didn't pick the right part. You pointed at your forehead. That wouldn't even close your eyes. Yeah, you look poached. Poached? Yeah, For you eggs? Don't, you don't look hard-boiled at all. <laughs> poached egg? I'm not, dude. I'm not poached. I'm hard-boiled. Okay. I am. William, you look great. And, and you know, you're just you're just a great little source of i don't know what the i don't know what the right word is miss y'all when can i start coming back by the studio when is this happening when you're just I... gonna be a few more a few more months when, when you don't look sick yeah you, you look <laughs> sick right now <laughs> <laughs> you're not allowed to i am hurt. sick right now but i love this set that you made you have a you have a mannequin head behind you is that your friend his girlfriend you see that can you get a load of that one yeah, you did that, huh? Yeah, it's like that. It looks like a it's a real person behind me. Yeah, it looks hey, exactly like a real person. Hey Angela. Hey Angela. Oh, that's uh, her name? <laughs> hey Angela. What kind of food would she be if she was a food? What do you think what type of food would she be? Probably a chicken Thai cuisine. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, the coconut flavor, the just the coconut flavor of that. How did they do that, those Thai people? It is incredible. I think they might use coconuts. <laughs> Maybe some coconut milk. I love it. I love that kind of food. I think you might be allergic to it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what did you eat today? What have you ate today? Would y'all, yeah, would y'all be scared if I was in there right now? Should I be I'm gonna, scared right yes. now? I'm going to take a guess. Did I did be you scared eat- right now? Did you eat? A, did you eat bread today? Did you have a sandwich today? What'd you actually eat? All yeah, jokes eat? aside, William. What'd you eat? Yeah, I had an uh, Italian sandwich with uh, uh, ham, turkey. Keep going. Cheese. It had. It was bread. I mean, really, it scares me now. Y'all asking me this? Does it really look like a? It's bad? Your eyes look closed right now. Yeah, know. they look closed. They, it looks like you ate something that you're allergic to. Like gluten. You should lay off bread for a little bit, dude. Lay off the gluten. Okay, I mean this scares me now. Give it a try, because the guy before okay. you looks like a version of you that uh, is so much healthier. Maybe that's yeah. it. Oh, maybe that's what we. That's yeah. that's, yeah, that's what maybe it is. this is how I always look. <laughs> and also, <laughs> yeah, I All always right. just look like this. All right, I don't. I don't think so. I don't think so. Wow. Your eyes are closed. Your eyes are fucked up. Like when did you start drinking today? What time? Oh, uh, six a.m. Okay. <laughs> there he goes, William Montgomery. Everybody, <laughs> William, we love you. Keep it going. Your next comedian goes by the name of Emily F. Here's Emily F, everyone. Hey, everybody. Coming to you from my work laptop, as opposed to most people who are just coming to things on their work laptop. Um, So a little about me. I'm a math teacher during the day, and I waitress at night. And if you were going to ask me which job is harder, I would say yes. The only big difference uh, between the jobs is if I gave a full people's elbow to a customer, I think my boss would believe them. But at the school, I think the biggest annoyance is all the screaming and crying and go on for like five, ten minutes at a time. Um, But the kids have gotten pretty good about dealing with me. Um, You know, they let me just cry it out. Sometimes they have to hide under the desk, you know, protect the head from the chairs flying. Um, And also at the waitressing job, you get plate liquors. But, I mean, how else am I supposed to eat? At this point, I'm just going to start an OnlyFans, be another job where nobody wants to listen to me talk. Hey, Emily F. Hello. Hi, how are you guys? Whoa, look at you. Glasses off for this. This is like one of those rom-coms where she turns into a... She turns into... Look at that. Whoa. Oh, my God. Look at that. Oh. 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 Get it. No, they both work. They both work. Emily, welcome to the show. How's it going? I was worried about the reflection, so I took them off. I'm great. I'm, I'm excited. How are you guys I lo- doing? 
I love it. Good, good. Have you ever done stand up comedy before? Never. I love Unless it. Unless you count like standing in front of a room of children and telling poop jokes to try to get them to do math, then I guess I, that works. But do you never like actual making, stand up. Do you like making your students laugh? Is it something that you do there, or are you more of a serious teacher? Yeah. Oh no, it's like my job specifically. I have to get them engaged in like listening, because right. otherwise they won't do anything. So it's yes. like my favorite part of the job. Yeah, for sure. What uh, what cl what uh, grade level are you teaching at? So actually I'm a math specialist. So I do everything from kindergarten to sixth grade. So I get everything from like the shitters of their pants to the eye rollers and everything in between. So sixth grade, what, what's the hardest level of sixth grade? Is that algebra yet? Yeah, they start to do a little algebra. And they're did not the good at it. Did the, kids ever, did the kids ever ask you why they're learning this stuff if there's gonna be calculators? Yes. And do. how do you respond to that? I actually have a, a, like my entire, one of my cabinet walls in my room is, when am I going to use this? Because I get that question all the time. But I just tell them like some bullshit about it, helping them problem solve and perseverance and all right, that but, shit. But, but you'll have none a calculator. Of, none, but none of you teachers really believe in that, right? You don't ever really think anybody's going to use that if X equals three and Y wow. equals seven. No. Right. Exactly. We got it here. Why, why, why do we have to do it then? Yeah. It's so annoying. We got the real confession you know, here I actually, from, from a real listen, teacher. Listen, I don't, I don't make the rules. Like I said, I tell them poop jokes. I get paid. Right. I'm happy. That's it. That's it. Red Band does the yeah. same thing. He tells sixth graders poop jokes every chance he gets. Yeah. That's so fun. So <laughs> you're a math teacher, <laughs> math teacher and a waitress. So why do you do yeah. both of those jobs? Because I teach. <laughs> right, right. You make more as a, a teacher or a waitress? If I worked the same hours as a waitress, I would make twice as much as what I make as a teacher. Right. Wow. Right. Which is... Did it, uh, or did it cost you a lot of money to get a degree to be able to teach? Uh, so I actually got my degree in criminal justice, and I worked with um, juvenile offenders in prison first. And that was not fun. Hell yeah. No, that's tough. Can you give us an example of a, a rough situation there in prison? Oh, God. There was, okay. So there was a one kid that we were doing an intake evaluation on. And we were trying to ask him questions about his life and, you know, what he had open pending charges. And he was so proud. He was staring at me the whole time. And he's like, I got B&Es, four of them. And like at that moment, I was just like, why? Why are you proud of this? Don't be proud of this. Stop it. Stop being proud of this. Wow. But Lord that's incredible. And he, I should say it, he was like 15. Right. What's that art behind you? What do you have up there on your wall? That is a map of the world, Tony. <laughs> nope. Not that. <laughs> not, a, not that, Elliot. I'm Thank like you, though. Girl, I have a map. Yep. We got the map. Yeah, What's the other girl, thing? What yeah. It's, that is a poster from a Dave Matthews concert I went to. Oh, okay. Okay. Again, I'm a white girl. Yeah, you are. I've been to Dave Matthews concerts before. I've never seen a more Latino-looking white girl in my life. <laughs> I am what? Greek. Dave Matthews. I'm precious Greek. Well, don't be offended there. by me calling you Latino. Sorry. Jesus, no, I am Mexican. Right. I'm a Mexican cat. Okay, I'm, I'm a... sorry. I'll oh, I hate this lady. Sorry. <laughs> Oh. oh my god. Shout out to Speedweed for my catnip tonight. LA Speedweed also delivers catnip. Elliot has catnip, everybody. Shit's about to get crazy over here. Uh oh. Are you super buff? Are you asking yeah. about her? Semi -buff? Yeah, you're buff, aren't you? I've been doing CrossFit for two years now. Mm. How do you know that, Brian? <laughs> you know that? Huh? I can tell that the first video, the video she sent in, she looked like she had some guns. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Actually, I lost 65 wow. pounds in the past two years. Oh, great. Oh, my goodness gracious. Can you do the math on that? What is it's she, like 12 uh, Junior Cheeseburger it's... Deluxe. <laughs> Actually, <yeah. laughs> friend. <laughs> I love it. You have a boyfriend? I'm married. Oh, how long have you been married for? Uh, two years now. Wow. What does he do? He's a welder. So he's actually essential. He's asleep. 
but because oh. he, he works still. Oh, okay. Where'd you guys meet? So, uh, actually, we met at the elementary school that I work at when we both went to school there. Wow. So he was like six yeah. years old, and you knew it was there was something to it. Sort of like our we our moms were like older moms, so they always hung out. So like we always ended up hanging out, and then he moved away. And I was like, when Facebook came out, I was like, oh, I wonder if that kid has a Facebook. And I looked him up. I was like, oh, shit, boy, you hot. So damn, I hit him up look at that. Do you feel creepy for then, like looking into like how this young child looked now? Like it's almost it's weird. Well. You know, I didn't actually picture him as an eight-year-old no, you when did. I was looking him up. But... You're like, let me see what this eight-year-old looks like now. See, I was confused. I didn't know that they were kids together. I thought she really was looking up some, like, six-year-old that's now oh an adult. Oh, my God. No. <laughs> I love it. You guys have kids? No. That's good. Not on that train. Bye-bye. I love it. I love it. I love it. Anything else crazy we should know about you before we let you go? Um, so I'm actually an artist part-time too. So I have another complete separate job from the waitressing and the teaching. Wow. So what's that job? You like teach art or something? No, no. So I, I paint murals. Um, I've done a couple of for the gym that I attend and then I do like portrait work for other people. Oh, wow. Awesome. Do you have any, any of your work anywhere close to you that you can like show us? Yeah. Yeah. I got yeah. some right here. Let's see it. So, let's see. You know this guy. This picture of me that we, were, <laughs> <laughs> that we were making fun of. And then just like a single tear dropped down my eye because you said you hated me. <laughs> I drew this for you. It's oh, bad shit. Bad. Whoa. That's bad. That's the best you've that. ever looked, Joel. Well, I can't believe <laughs> it. I look great in that. Thank you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Cat pit. That's great. Yeah. Cat got like, <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> I got I like little it. minis that I did of other people. So oh, wow, Michael Lair, that's awesome. Yeah, that's great. Uh, Michael it. Lair and I have beef. So really, beef. what is it? Beef. What's the beef? <laughs> we do. Listen, what's the what's I the beef? Him I had tickets to Boston, and I told him I was like, "You guys come to Boston. I freaking love you." And he was like, "Well, I cannot come to Boston." So I told him I was going to beat him with a tube sock filled with soap. Oh, wow. okay. Well, <laughs> that's fucked up. I mean, that's pretty fucked up. Yeah, he he is. seems to like it. Yeah. No, he so might. So aggro. He might. He so this was wasn't about it. hamburgers. He's the type of genius that'd probably be into taking a good beating once in a while. Oh, yeah. Well, uh, Emily, <laughs> that was awesome. That was a lot of fun. Where are you hey, again? Thanks. I'm in Massachusetts. I I had tickets to the Boston show, but it got canceled so no it's not canceled it's actually rescheduled well, we are there uh, yeah. august 13th two kill tonys and four stand-up shows yeah august I'm, 13th I'm super 14th, excited to go and 15th mm -hmm. well we will see you there make sure you say hi there awesome. goes emily f everybody thank you emily Thanks, guys. Emily F. we're gonna keep flying through them today you can just keep playing here's eli gill my friend here's Eli Gill everybody what's up guys a little about me um, I don't necessarily dislike being the little spoon um, I was thinking about making a uh, mother-son dating app uh, it's called Oedipole Arrangements it's where moms uh, hook up their sons with other moms to date you know but uh, myself, I don't date anymore because uh, I'm married. And uh, yeah, my wife, she's awesome. She's good at a lot of things, but uh, closing a box of cereal is not one of them. And uh, and uh, yeah, it looks like um, you know, it looks like there was a cat in the box, and she was fighting not to get clawed. You know, she's just like, and then she puts it on top of the fridge when she's done with it. So, I don't know, it's kind of crazy. Hell yeah. Eli Gill. 
Hi, Eli. How's it going? Guys? How are you? Guys. Welcome Pretty to good. the show. Welcome to the Thanks. show. Uh, My video is terrible. Yeah, you yeah. Got one frame per 10 seconds. Yeah, it's really, <laughs> yeah. really um, lagging there. You on your neighbor's Wi-Fi or something? Yeah, I, w I wish. No, I'm um, I'm sitting right next to the router, actually. Oh, my God. goodness gracious. Yeah. Yeah. You look Prodigy. like a flip book. Yeah. Oh, thanks. You look like you're doing ventriloquism right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you look like the dummy. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. Well, no, because the dummy's mouth would fucking move, Elliot. <laughs> well, you dummy now. <laughs> not if he's an actual dummy, then he doesn't know when to open his mouth when it's But no, the, no the, the dummy's not a dummy. It's a thing operating. Hey, what is that art you have behind you? Is it uh, the world? <laughs> <laughs> that wasn't the art. That's still Elliot. That wasn't the art that I was talking I have about. autism. I'm a special needs cat. Jesus. Oh, my God. I would God. like to hear more about that. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> oh, my God. Dang. Oh, my God. So, what's so, up, guys? How's it going? I mean, look. It's pure ventriloquism that's <laughs> I, happening I mean, right now. His mouth. Hello. How are you, Eli? Everything's good here. <laughs> really, I'm, a, what? I'm a ventriloquist. <laughs> really, what is wrong yeah, with dude. your internet? Is it really that bad? Did you guys know that I no, could do this? I could be a fucking not. ventriloquist if I wanted to be. <laughs> Maybe he's just really fat. Yeah, it's really uncomfortable with his hand up my butt. I don't know. No, again, you fucks. The ventriloquist is not the one with the fucking hand up the butt. Is everybody retarded? Hey, we don't it. use that word anymore. Yeah, I can't use that word. I can. I'm retarded. <laughs> Shoot. Well, yeah, do you have any yeah, lights you can turn on? Maybe it's just you. your... The, 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 the rumor on the streets is the that light? perhaps if you had better lighting... Yeah, it's probably like... Hold on yeah. I mean, perhaps if you have a Wi-Fi tower with a light attached to it that you could flip on. Yeah. Yeah. Are you on an engage? <laughs> yeah. I, I really don't understand what's going on here. Uh, wow. Because haven't I didn't have a problem with the with the call earlier, so I don't no, know. I know they test all these things out. And That's then, so weird. Yeah, and it looks like you're on like happens. a low lighting low light setting on your phone. Are you using your phone or a laptop? No, I, I'm on my laptop. You look haunted. Look, it's not going to get any better. It doesn't matter what he looks like. Let's just try to plow through it. Eli, uh, fun stuff. Your wife really messes up the cereal boxes that badly. Again, guys, <laughs> you just showed the fucking dummy. <laughs> hey, Corona has made things weird. Now ventriloquists are getting oh, hands yeah. up their ass now, too. You got to make a living. Hey, stop flashing Tony. Yeah, yeah that's my new headshot. <laughs> 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 You're goosebump. So, oh, uh, little spoon. Yeah. I agree with that. I like being the little spoon as well. It's, sometimes like it's a, a fun spoon. thing. Hey, nothing, little spoon, big spoon. I'm just guy. happy to be on the bed. <laughs> <laughs> Jesse Johnson. God. God, Jesse Johnson. I've always preferred dogs to cats. I don't like the way you look at me when you say that. I know. I know. I will eat you in your no, sleep. No, you won't. Yes. <laughs> Nuh-uh. Slower on it. Edible arrangements. The wife doesn't close the cereal. I got you, Eli. What, what else up? about your life? Where in the world are you right now? I am uh, I'm in Indiana. Indiana. That makes sense. Yeah, now go. it's all yeah, making yeah, sense. Yeah, 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 it all makes sense. Right. You pre that's the fastest yeah. Wi-Fi in Indiana and, and right he, there. You got that laptop <laughs> at Myers. Oh, <laughs> uh, no. <laughs> Eli, what do you do for a living? I'm an electrician, man. You ever do stand-up comedy before on a stage? No, nah, man. I, I, uh, they have a local open mic that, uh, is, you know, obviously is recently uh, shut down. But um, I had aspired to go on that. But uh, where I got at a family and I just, uh, no, it's it's at a, a place called Kettle Top Brew House. Um, okay. In Anderson. Okay. Everything, so, every but, comedy club in Indiana is named after white, white people shit. Crackers, <laughs> kettle corn. <laughs> they got fucking yeah, uh, Karen's Comedy Club. All right, yeah, Eli. Have, uh, where they have helium now or something? Anyways. Yep, there's a brand new helium there in Indianapolis. Mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of the helium yeah. comedy clubs. I was just talking with the owner of all the heliums last week, talking about what they're doing to get things uh, set up. I'm friends with that guy. Yeah, it'd be, awesome genius. Guys, it'd be awesome if you came to India instead of Fort Wayne. Yeah, 
for sure. We're never going to Fort Wayne. Never again. again. No need to worry about that. But yeah, we'll probably be there eventually. <laughs> But it might be more worth it to drive to um, Columbus, Ohio, or Chicago, yeah. Illinois. Yeah, it's only a two-hour drive. Yeah, easy breezy. Yeah, it's not too far from here. No. Well, Eli, uh, maybe we'll get you back some other time and uh, get that uh, get that Wi-Fi. You're an electrician. Get in there and do yeah. it yourself and <laughs> angle some wires, not, bro. Not you gotta go to in there. Go in there like you're <laughs> defusing a bomb and fix that shit. There goes Eli Gill. Thank you, yeah, Eli. Yeah. Have a good one, buddy. Thank you, thank you. Ah, speaking of Wi-Fi. Speaking of Wi-Fi, right. No? Uh, oh, David, David Lucas. Lucas. Okay, uh, uh, David Lucas with you, the... You know, he said he got new internet last week and that's why he didn't have internet and then me and William were like well why didn't you just use your cell phone internet he goes hey I don't have cell phone internet good at my house I don't know what's going on it doesn't matter what are you gonna do where's he live what are you gonna do there's what a pandemic have? going on David Lucas without a doubt obviously more than anybody and this isn't a dig but like his style uh really is for an audience yeah I mean he's a true pure stand-up comedian I've always said that unbelievable joke writer and performer for the stage you know you have your william montgomery's that are very silly and that's their backbone it's you know a different type of comedy silly the last few years i think people have forgotten what's funny and what's silly sometimes silly is also funny and sometimes funny shit i don't know what i was saying there but the, the there's a point and the point is is that William, oh yes, William is always silly and sometimes funny. And Michael Lair, I mean, is just a different type of uh, funny. Um, he's, you know, incredibly unorthodox with over two decades of Chicago Second City improv experience. So obviously a guy like that can mold to this pandemic. Whereas David Lucas, I feel like, is a lot more sort of my style, which is sort of serious comedy. You give us an audience, we'll fucking rip it. We'll feed off of that energy and use the timing and beats to our advantage. But shit like this pandemic, we've, you've got us frozen, fake smiling through all of this baloney. So this is all a big front. I think that ex explanation makes some sense. Um, is he good to go? Yeah. Great. Beautiful. Here we go. We're moving to Jason, everybody. Is it Friday the 13th? Because I present to you Jason. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thanks for joining our event tonight. I'm your host, Jason. At the beginning, let's all take a moment and honor our nurses and doctors. Psych! Those motherfuckers get paid enough! <laughs> <laughs> thank you, thank you. <laughs> Have you ever wondered what it takes to make a religion? <laughs> it's kind of funny, you know, they... They say that churches are non-profit. I don't know if I buy that because their whole shtick isn't that based off of a profit. <laughs> I loved it. I loved it. I loved it. Yeah, me too. That was fun. That's fucking awesome. Genuinely funny submission. That is Can awesome. Can you guys hear me good? Yep. yep. Everything's good. Good frame Internet's rate. Internet's booming. Everything's mm. good. Business is a booming. How are you, Jason? Never been better, man. Where are you, man? Where Where in the world are you? A uh, little bumfuck town in Pennsylvania, Elizabethtown. Elizabethtown. Is that near... It's, uh, like, it's like 10 minutes from Hershey in between oh, Lancaster yeah. and Harrisburg. Okay. Hershey. Is Hershey Park still a thing? Like, does it still smell like chocolate when you were driving through it? Oh, yeah. Oh, God, I love that. We park. just did Me that. Too. We just did that drive a few months ago. Philly to 
Pittsburgh. Oh, yeah, I remember. <laughs> I had to do it in a separate car because I couldn't fit in the same car as you guys. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> Hey, yeah, least... that was fun. Come on, don't be a baby. I'll tell you what, I missed Wawa apple fritters ever since then. I bet you do. Hey, this I guy looks like Tank Abbott if he was actually part Tank. Yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> we had a healthier version of William Montgomery earlier, and right now we have a healthier version of Brian Redman. Hey. It's so exciting. <laughs> well, wait till you hear the song. <laughs> what what song? I he made a song. song? Right, yeah. right. I he made a, a song. Okay. The third we... verse, you guys get a shout out. So bump this shit and let me know what you think. Oh, I are we gonna? Wait. You're gonna play his song? Is there anything else we need to know before playing it? I mean, tell me what you feel. That's all okay. I want to know. All right, here we go. Jason sent in a song. Let's hear it. <laughs> here we go. Turn it up. <laughs> Turn it up. It's never been more eminent, eminent, eminent. We coming out the shadows. It's time that you all know. Welcome into my mind. No need for re's dropping. I don't want to be the best. Just aiming for the top ten. Every day we must progress because the beat is never stopping. Try not to go make a mess with all of my brain dropping. They got you hooked like you're smoking crack. They got you hooked like you're shooting smack. They got you hooked like there's no turning back. But sometimes the truth ain't in the almanac. I'd rather not have to be a martyr, but I'm willing to die to make you smarter. Coming from the shadows, I'm coming for the top. Please be suspicious if I suddenly drop. We coming out the shadows. It is time that you all know. Yeah. Fuck the Rachel Maddow. Pull your head out of your asshole. Please know I'm not suicidal We raging against the machine This is for our survival Just open up your eyes and take a good look There's the fishing line and you're on the hook It's gotta be the status quo time to change It's kinda hard to find someone who isn't deranged The whole damn system, top to bottom yeah. So damn corrupt like Hillary Rodham hey. Blue or red, it doesn't matter what they said You already know they definitely bought them. I'ma have to shake your world like a snow globe. Aiming at you with the microscopic scope. Let the soak deep in your frontal lobe. And you might just question everything that you thought you know. How many generations gonna be complacent? If ignorance is bliss, then bliss must be amazing. Has your life been feeling like a horror story? Well, my name's Jason. Welcome to Purgatory. Coming out the shadows. It is time that you all know. Fuck the Rachel Maddow. Pull your head out of your asshole. Please know I'm not suicidal. We raging against the machine. This is for our survival. <laughs> All I need's a puff and your mind's a blunder. So go ahead and call me a one-hit wonder. The only way to explain your lack of light, your kundalini energy is out of sight. Some might say, no way, that's voodoo. But look at me, I'm going harder than a blue chew. Might just have to send this in to kill Tony. I love your red band, but lay off the baloney. Chromos hey! Chris, Jeremiah, Dover, Jetski. The creme de la creme, as good as Gretzky. <laughs> I'm so thankful that you both aren't nudists. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Tony. Last name Hinchcliffe, a little gay jabroni. Save the best for last, stand up for Michael Lair. The original gangster, a true player's player. Wow. Coming out wow. The show. <laughs> wow. I love it. Great. That's the best rap song that's come out during this fucking quarantine. It's the best fucking 10... Ten, uh, I don't even know what to call it. I made ten songs in like the last week and a half, and they're fucking crazy. I love it, man. I don't want to hear the other nine. That's really good. I have nine lives. You that have nine was the songs second I want to hear. In the progression of it. Wow, that is incredible. I would not have taken you you by your appearance, sending in a set. Me neither, in, man. From the bathroom <laughs> with chew tobacco, with you know a blue spittoon. Chew. I like the blue chew reference. Yeah. I don't know how you know that I love baloney. Yes. I'm a big baloney guy. It's true. <laughs> I, I yeah, can you can't even from know here, from the man. smell. You're not here. Lay off of the baloney. <laughs> hey. We like it. I already have the whole song memorized. Gage a bro. Fuck yeah. That's right. my favorite part. Like, that part. I, bet it, I bet it was. Well, I'm also a gay jabroni. I, yeah. Anyway. 
I love it. Yeah. The dog over here, Parker, can't stop, can't get it out of its head. <laughs> all right, all right. Okay. Parker is actually the daughter of Nate Dog, so it's... What do you What do you do for a living? I uh, work in construction with my dad and family members and shit, just a little small time contracting thing. I Doing like remodeling and whatnot. Cool. I love it, man. Well, I mean, you had great jokes. Yeah. The song was fucking awesome. I loved everything about you, man. I you mean, need was... to listen to all the other ones, and I suggest you eat an edible and fucking just have like 10 doobies ready because your mind's going to be blown. Where do we find those at? I Plug it right here. Where can we find those songs at? It's all on SoundCloud under Bees J. Cool. B E E S. Oh, I have it written down here. B E E S underscore J A. Jesus. J A Y Y Y. Is this your password right. or the name? <laughs> <laughs> Jesus no, fucking a, Christ. It was just a little name I made up when I was super fucked up and it stuck, you know? <laughs> three Y's at the end. Why, why three Y's? Because it's J. J. Hey. Well, that. That works, but you always got to ask why three times to smell the bullshit, you know? Why? Damn. You know what? I yeah, like why? that. Yeah, why? That's, that's... Ask it again. Ask it again. <laughs> why? <laughs> why? There you go. Very right. good, man. We loved it. Thank you so much, Jason. <laughs> You're awesome. It does look... I will, I, will, I will insult you just one time. One little thing here. Go back for a second to where you put your arm back behind your head again. Jeez, I tell you I'm going to make fun of you, and then you change. The distance between your shoulder and your elbow is obnoxiously small. <laughs> That's I the only thing arms. I can make fun of. <laughs> Very rarely do I even I'm make fun of people. I'm only 5'8", so... 5'8", no, that, no, that's a whole different thing. 5'8 does not matter. What I'm specifically making fun of is it appears, at least... That you have about a four-inch bicep, like from elbow to shoulder. It might be one of the shortest arms I've ever seen. I can't imagine how hard it must be to do construction. <laughs> you must be... Red you, man pulled something. <laughs> there you go. Red man had to move for the first time in four months. Oh, my no, God. I was moving the camera earlier to oh, show he's... you this painting. Yeah. Uh, oh, I love uh, that. That's your little doggy. Did you paint that? <laughs> No, nah, my brother-in-law's sister painted it. It's fucking incredible. Oh, it's that is amazing. How long have you had your dog for? Uh, like two years now. He's a little oh. over two. Oh, wow, I... it's a husky just like you. He's a, he's a wolf, husky, Alaskan Malamute, Australian cattle dog mix. What wow, that's like, like that uh, Alaskan wolf, husky. What else? Australian cattle dog. Yeah, that's like all the people that have been on the show so far today <laughs> combined into one. It's a little uh, fun fact. Yeah, I don't, know. I don't know if you believe in coincidence or not, but I don't. <laughs> no, I absolutely agree. Um, uh, Jason, thank you so much for... Fuck you, uh, Joel. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Elliot's a real, real patty tonight. It's pretty fucking unbelievable, yet super believable. That's the microphone. <laughs> Elliot. Uh, hey, well, I just want to say I'm so glad I get on here, and this is fucking awesome. Yeah. And we got to change this fucking world, man. I love it. We're going to do it. Make sure you come say hi when we're 20... in uh, Pittsburgh or Philly or something. Yeah, I need to. 2028, I want to be the youngest president ever at 35. Let's make it happen. I love it. You do got it. my vote. I'm telling I'll you bet. right now, I like it. There goes Jason, everybody. <laughs> He's on Twitter at J one B E E S J A Y Y Y one, and he's on SoundCloud. Check out the nine songs that we didn't hear. B E E S underscore J A Y Y Y on SoundCloud. This is Texas, ladies and gentlemen. Here's Texas. There you go. Very good. Here's Texas. I'm not leaving here till I get some pussy. That is my impersonation of William Montgomery at Jamba Juice. Can't take him anywhere. I don't give a fuck about a baby sea turtle. I have a cocaine habit. You probably guessed it. That's still William Montgomery at Jamba Juice. Yeah, that's right. Do not hand that man a cardboard straw. 
You want to hear my best William? This is my best William joke. I don't believe in astrology because I'm an Aquarius with a Virgo rising in my moon is in Capricorn, which makes me a very skeptical person by nature. Well, that is William flirting with the goddamn hippie who runs the Jamba Juice. Yeah, imagine that. Ever since I discovered wet wipes, I stopped taking showers. Well, that is William after discovering wet wipes. All right, Texas. Hi, Texas. How are you, buddy? Pretty good. Where are you? Texas? <laughs> I'm in Galveston. Galveston, Texas. Oh, ah, the former home of the great Robert Durst, who once pushed, uh, pushed a chopped up body into the bay there in Galveston, thinking that it would float the other direction. He made the sweet, sweet assumption that throwing a body into the bay, that the body would go into the water. That's what happens when you're raised by billionaires. Was that before he started uh, Limp Bizkit? <laughs> yep. Bob Durst. I break stuff or what's that song yep. or whatever. You know the song, You're Shockers. a Fucking Cat. You know, you know Limp Bizkit. So, uh, Texas, uh, Galve uh, Galveston, huh? How is it there right now? How's the quarantine treating everybody? What are your thoughts on this whole thing? We are back to work, and it's nice. I like making money. I love it. What do you do? I am a glass blower. Oh, okay. Ooh. Yep, indeed. All right. I love it. And uh, Blow glass by day, kill Tony by night, all day, all day. I love it. I love it. What's that behind you? Is that Williams? Is that Williams' friend? Uh, <laughs> that is that? Vidal Zargoza. Oh hell yeah! Absolutely. Look at you guys. Got the hats, the sunglasses. I love it's time it. Time to float the river. How do you know? How do you know Gozer? Uh, we did a hot topic fashion show together in the early two thousands. I was the DJ. Wow. <laughs> I was like, that sounds pretty good. <laughs> Look at that. So this is what the Hot Topic DJs are like in Galveston, Texas. What type of music do you play? Oh, you know, whatever suits my fancy. A lot of bullfighting music. You know, the thing I love about bull music is that when you're listening to it, you know many men have lost their life, gored to death by bass to the score. Of that music. Absolutely. And, you know, 30 seconds from Mars can't say that, you know? Absolutely. I mean, I maybe agree. they can, but certainly not the Foo Fighters or the Red Hot Chili Pepper. I couldn't agree with you more, Texas. In fact, I'll spill the beans right here. I listen to bullfighting music quite often. I'll turn it up I bet while I'm driving. Yep. It, sound like? it sounds like uh, you ever hear La Virgin de la Macarena? Not the oh. Macarena, Elliot. Thank no, you for no, your no, fucking no. simple. I was going to say that song is actually bison fighting music. Okay, very good. There you go. Oh, yeah. Jesus. I love it. I love it. Yes, it's bison <laughs> fighting fucking music. You need music. a spray bottle. Well, wow, oh this situation God. reminds me of the time I had to drive to Philadelphia from Pittsburgh wow. in a separate car. Yeah. And the guy <laughs> with the farting dog. It was great. Uh, this situation reminds me of the time three weeks ago when the band was over chiming in. And by the band, I don't mean Jesse Johnson. <laughs> All I was going to say is at least you got to be in a car. Yeah. I was yeah. in a car with a dog. That sounds kept farting. <laughs> that okay. sounds awesome. Oh, shit. All right. They look like they're going to shoot us. Yeah, La Virgin de la Macarena is the, uh, that is the theme song for the great and powerful, a god to me, the great Don Rickles, Mr. Warm. It's fucking powerful music. Highly recommend that. Straight off my Spotify playlist. Woo! Yeah, let's. 
a lot of people don't know that yeah. Tony has one of the best Spotify play- playlists, and it's very random. He goes from, like, yep. you would never think that he would listen to this kind of music. Did yeah. you guys listen to that on the way it's, from uh, Philadelphia oh, yeah. to, were you to yeah. Oh, you were listening to a story, probably. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but to Red Band's point, I mean, I would put my Spotify playlist right up there against absolutely anybody's. Yeah, it's pretty good. I was very impressed. A little actually. fun fact is uh, quite often he, at the comedy store in the back bar, especially, uh, well, I don't need to give away the specific yeah, times and places and nights, but I uh, tend to seamlessly DJ um, the VIP area without even people noticing, and I don't even have to do any work. Because my playlist is already made. Super powerful. And I know people are going to ask how to find my Spotify playlist. But it is private and by extreme invite only. And I'm very picky of who I give it to. Because people steal your shit. (laughs) Shady like that. What? Give it to me. Okay, I'll give it to you, Texas. You know what? I like that. I'm like a dog. If you're very commanding, uh, you know what? I give just, it to me. I just, just, just hand it over. I get it. Uh, well, I'm Texas, just... fun stuff, man. Um, I, I loved it. I, I like everything about this. This is fun. This is a likable, uh, likable delivery character. Everything about it. <laughs> Even though you just did Williams <laughs> impersonations. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and he made him sound like what? Mr. Magoo or something like that. I forget the voice. <laughs> oh, you. Droopy dog. I was going for dog. droopy dog. Yeah, that's what it is. Oh, worries. Before I recorded that, I was trying to get into a William character. And I kept saying, I'm hurt real bad. I'm hurt real bad and I need some pussy. How far are you? Just and out of my own curiosity. Was... I, I got to go back to this because uh, I, I probably won't. I just want to bring it up. How far are you from that bay that Bob Durst dropped that body in? I'm a huge... Is that Guadalupe? No, it's Galveston Bay. But the question is, how close are you to that uh, drop-off spot? Do you know what I'm talking about? Have you watched The Jinx on HBO? I have not, but I am familiar with what you're talking about. I thought that was on the seawall, but that may have been Jamaica Beach. No, I think it, it it was on the seawall, and it was there in Galveston. I do. I'm pretty sea positive. Seawall's right down the street. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, you got to watch that, especially since you're in Galveston. It's like one of the craziest things to ever happen there, for sure. It's a story of a uh, a billionaire. His father actually owned the fucking World Trade Center, and everyone else in his family was super successful. He was supposed to take over the family business and uh, become. It, the billionaire inheritor of the business, but uh, but they they didn't give it to him, and let's just say he got back at his family in one of the wildest ways possible by shaming their name by being an elusive serial killer, and it's all true. It's one of those documentaries. It's just unbelievable. The Jinx from HBO. Um, was he the one by... that lived as a woman or disguised himself yep, as a yep, woman? right there in Galveston, probably right down the fucking street from you. It's directed by the great Andrew Jarecki, unbelievable documentarian, and it's the jinx on HBO. Uh, during this quarantine time, it's important to stay entertained, and that's one of those things that'll be a fun binge watch if you're into crime things. Anyway, thank you very much, Texas. We got to keep it moving. We have a special guest phoning in. There's Texas. Thank you, buddy. Thanks, buddy. Thank, thank you. you, Texas. He's on Instagram at TX Comedy, all one word. And we have a special, special guest joining us right now, ladies and gentlemen. This is not a comedian who has submitted. Instead, this is a comedian who I have grown with and come up with over well over a decade now in Los Angeles, California. And uh, he is the future and the present right now he has his debut one hour comedy special this friday on showtime am i correct this friday what is it 10 p.m jesus 9 p.m 9 p.m on showtime i mean it's an unbelievable deal this is one of these guys that uh that i have been so close with that i've always loved you know uh 
uh, I think uh, I think some people might know that I I'm obsessed with comedy. I'm one of those guys that hangs out at the comedy <laughs> store way too late. I love talking shop. I love the science behind it. I love how everybody's different. And this is one of those guys that gets it, took the hardest path possible at the comedy store, didn't try to get famous too quick. He wanted to get good. Um, and uh, also with all those credits I just dropped, I will also say that this is one of the, I would say, top five guys out of everyone at the comedy store that can genuinely make me double over with laughter. Ladies and gentlemen, Jesus Trejo is joining us. Yeah, what's up, you guys? What's, you don't have to wear uh, your mask for this, hey, Seuss. I mean, I don't know. I'm taking every precaution, baby. Shit. I, no. I, I, want, I want to see the premiere of my special. I love it. You're in your car right now, and somehow you had better Wi-Fi than the guy in Indiana. <laughs> 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 your stream is super clear. I'm so proud of you. I'm so excited for your debut this Friday. This is a moment that we've been talking about absolutely forever. There was never yeah, a man. doubt in anyone's mind. So uh, tell us about it. Tell us about anything and everything about what's going on in your life. Well, first of all, I want to say thank you to the both of you for having me on. This is great. Love you both. And and and, and the whole Kill Tony, you, you know, company. I mean, you guys always been, you know, 100 to me. And, and I appreciate that. But, man, I'm, I'm excited. My first one hour special, uh, Stay at Home Sun on Showtime, 9 p.m. on Friday. Um, yeah. excited, man. It was like, it finally happened, man. I, I, I couldn't believe it. It finally happened. Yep. And you did it the right way. Like I said, so many people, especially, um, you know, this is sort of a weird, this is like a taboo topic, but I, I'll just, I'll just go with my gut on this. Um, so many people, especially I've noticed nowadays, you know, that are diverse, right? Like you are as Mexican and LA as Look at Tony trying to be civil. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. Diverse. But, <laughs> but seriously, like some people, especially diverse people, will be, in my opinion, and I think a lot of people's uh, professional opinions, sometimes given a little bit too much too fast nowadays, sometimes, right? Um, and I think they would agree with this is what I'm saying. I don't think this is a white guy saying that people no. are given things too fast. Right. I, you're I would Mexican. say that, yeah, whatever you're saying, it's more whatever's hot is sometimes thrown into the forefront and they don't get the time to incubate. Right. And so, yeah, right. I would agree with that. Like, for example, Tiffany Haddish, everyone was like, when is she going to get famous? She was like a famous person so that when she started getting things she exploded and that's what i'm telling you right now we were the first to show you tiffany haddish everybody that was a kill tony fan knew tiffany haddish years before uh the normal comedy fan did um and jesus is another one of these guys that he's you've been on uh a couple episodes of kill tony on the panel correct yeah, yeah. I, yep. I i was even a a, a patriot at one yeah, point i, I remember yeah, yeah, you're right. the mexican patriot <laughs> Hey, yeah. Mexican way, patriot. And so was Tiffany Haddish. Yeah. And so was great comedic actor Ryan Mervis. And so was Jeremiah Watkins, who moved on to be uh, the leader of the band. And so many great comedic minds were our heads of security at one point. That's that's an elite crew. You've been kicking, <laughs> you've been kicking ass lately, buddy. Because not only do you have this amazing special that's coming out, but you also have your own show yeah. on First We Feast, which I love, man. You have a talk taco tacos show. con todo. Yes, and that's I right. watched every episode. Episode, the great episode with Tom Zagura and Christina P. Like uh, amazing, and and you you kick ass. If you don't know First or Feast, they're the same guys that do uh, our good buddy Sean from Hot Ones, and and I love it, man. You just wrapped up your first season of that. Look at that, and, and, and it's what what a yeah. dream job that is. You just go to your favorite taco places, eat tacos with a bunch of comics. Uh, talk congratulations shop. on all your su success, man. You're you're killing it. I'm so proud of you, buddy. Yeah. Thank you so much, man. Love you, man. And and yeah, it's like I love you guys, man. It just it, it's it's been cool to kind of have everything kind of be, uh, you know, having things see the light of day. Finally, I've been working hard on these things, and you know, finally it's it's come out for people to check out. And it's yeah, I'm excited. And we got season two of Tacos Con Todo, and that's coming out, you know, hopefully late this year if everything gets back to normal. Great. 
Be- before we move on, can I say like just yeah. I, this is whatever sentimental, but as a Mexican person, like I fucking I love it, dude. I was waiting for the premiere of that taco show. I watched it the night it came out. The special's dope. There's oh, a, I don't spoil the joke. There's a joke about uh, yoga at gunpoint. Check it out. Uh, I mean, I just, dude, I've shown my family <laughs> your stuff. It's just nice to see you doing it. Like to what Tony said, it's like you weren't, you're not a Mexican comic. You're a, you're a comic who's Mexican. I exactly. love that. Exactly. I really it, like, you know, exactly. I look at you, man. Kind. It's really Thank great you, to brother. see you kicking ass, dude. 100%. You nailed everything that I ended up turning into a, what sounded like a racist <laughs> rant. <laughs> <laughs> of the diverse brown kind. I was like, well, wait a minute, right. Tony. Well, We're these, friends, dude. <laughs> all these goddamn Mexicans and blacks getting all the specials nowadays. <laughs> 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 but that's exactly what I was saying and not only are you a comic that just happens to be Mexican but you're a true comedy store comic built in the grits of the darkness of the store there's a whole different crew that was there when the place was empty and business wasn't booming and 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 all right. the talent scout all the execs and all the agents and managers were in a whole nother part of Los <laughs> Angeles well, we were building the infrastructure at the comedy store up, making it a more positive place, making it a place that people would actually want to go to, creating shows that were outside the box that other people weren't doing. And we were door guys there during the same time, too. That's what's crazy. Exactly. We it, overlapped a little bit and just seeing each yeah. other work and then you getting past. And, you know, I, do you remember the conversation we had in the video room, which now is the, the, the comics bar? Yeah. And, and 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 you looked at me. You're like, you watch, you watch and see. And and the true Tony uh, cadence and tone. And and, and look, you yeah. you've built this empire. It's 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 amazing to watch, man. From seeing Kill Tony be in the belly room with just a couple people, sometimes just you guys, you know, yeah. talking into the mic, and now to sold out main rooms, and now to figuring it out, man. It's just a testament to. To, to, well, to I'll, I'll all even one-up to... you on that. In that very room that you're talking about, the video room, which is now the VIP bar, is a poster that hangs on the wall, a framed piece of art that's you and I. A fun fact, oh, yeah. <laughs> is, a fun fact for you listeners out there is that I have only lost in my entire life three roast battles. My record is rumored at 79 and 3. How's that for some Tyson Fury shit? And hey. one of those three losses was from Jesus Trejo. Yeah, That's a big crazy. Deal. I remember that night. Hell yeah, yeah you do. I, I, yeah. I, I, <laughs> and so does Tony. Nobody forgets when they beat me. <laughs> <laughs> and neither does Tony. Mm-mm. You're goddamn right we, I don't. After that roast battle, I remember we walked up and down a sunset and we rattled off all the jokes we didn't get to uh, say yep. to one another. Yeah. At point blank. Yeah. Do you remember any of the uh, the better <laughs> ones that you said? Huh. I don't remember. Probably some Unless Tony remembers. And stuff. I'm sure it was. I'm sure at least one had to do with me being gay. One had to do with me probably starving or something like that. Holocaust victim, probably. No. These, are the, these are the ones that people hit me on. I remember. Uh, oh, I remember one. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I, I think it was something along the lines of like, hey, Tony, congratulations. Your, uh, your only credit on IMDb is a key grip on Jeff Ross's dick. <laughs> oh my god that's awesome and a fun fact okay, i remember one that i had for you too is that uh jesus is named after jesus which makes sense because he dies on stage he comes back three days later and jews don't believe in him either <laughs> <laughs> But uh, another fun fact great. about that battle, which is now artwork in that VIP bar, is that that was the show. That's the show that they had all the execs come to, and we made Roast Battle a television show that night. That was the that was the showcase show to for them to ever make a TV show. About a year, year and a half later, they actually were done with production and debuted with a show called Roast Battle. We were the ones that uh, that wowed the crowd enough to make it happen. So that's great. Yeah, there was, was another... a couple of networks there that night. Remember? Yeah. yeah right. Yeah. Yeah. That's sure. right. 
all the Comedy wow. Central execs were there because I remember because I already knew them from working on The Burn, from writing on that show. And I was talking with the head of Comedy Central in the back parking lot. And Boone Shakalaka came up to me, and I believe his exact words were, "Oh man, your, your night, your night did not go good up there tonight, did it? Something like that. It was super annoying." Do you want to buy confidence for a dollar? God, what? He's like, do you want to buy confidence for a dollar? Yeah, exactly. No. Unbelievable. So much fun. But yeah, Jesus, man. we are so proud of you. Enough Congrats, reminiscing. Man. Let's talk about the future. I just recommended the Jinx to everybody, but but set your DVRs right now, everyone. It's Jesus Trejo's Stay at Home Son this Friday, 9 p.m., his first one-hour special. You're going to say that you saw him here first and that we funneled you straight into it. 62 yeah. minutes. It's a real grown-up <laughs> special, not one of these 47-minute specials that are that are that are all stretched out. <laughs> this is a real 62 minutes. This guy's a fucking monster. I'm gonna be watching it, and we're so proud of you, Jesus. You're you did it the the real way. You're a fucking hilarious dude on stage and off. Like I said, this is one of these guys that doubles me over. Master impressionist, master in the moment. Just a funny <laughs> fucking guy. Some comedians aren't. Uh, some comedians aren't always that funny. Some of the time, some, my some favorite guys will are... always be you yeah. and I in the parking lot roasting yep. each other before roast battle was a thing till like yep. five in the morning. Yep. And um, yeah, we did that quite often. Do you remember five a.m. going? Absolutely. Oh, on more than one occasion. Absolutely. My more on more than thirty occasions. Absolutely. Yeah. It, and, yeah, man. Yeah. The, it's it, it, it's just great that you know. You know, thank you for your friendship and your support. And I think you're amazing. And, you know, here we go. Let's build. And this is a weird time for all of us. But, hey, man, let's, uh, let, you know, let's keep the train moving. That's it. Absolutely. Here we go. Hey, Jesus you, Trejo, this Friday, 9 p.m. Thank you, guys. Thank you, Jesus. Have a great night. Stay Love home, you. son. This Friday night, 9 p.m. on Showtime. Set your DV. And that's going to be like a, a real special, unlike a lot of these specials, because this is going to be his work, his life, yeah. you know, not like one of these paychecks. I'm going to write this in the next two months just to get a paycheck. You and know, he's also a great human being. Yeah. He uh, takes care of his parents. He takes care of his family. He's scared just a of dogs. great guy. Uh, he is scared of dogs. Oh, I, I forgot about I that. You should have barked at him a little bit. He's definitely afraid it. of dogs. <laughs> it's that time of the night, ladies and gentlemen, that we wait all week for. I present to you the golden goat of all time, the comedy store. It's Michael Lair. Here comes Michael Lair. Here he is, Michael Lair. Not walking is cool. I can't remember last time I saw my toe. <laughs> I miss my bicycle. I don't get a doe to ride BMX. Are they just bratty grown-ups who are like, I don't want a bigger bicycle. Diets have changed so much. When I see old friends, I can't tell if they're on keto or if they have cancer. <laughs> if you're in a wheelchair, you can antagonize people and they won't do shit make people super self-conscious. Wow, your gums are longer than your teeth. <laughs> I'm living for today. I don't have a $10,000 limit on my credit card. I have a $10,000 gift card. <laughs> ah! <laughs> ah! <laughs> It's <laughs> Michael Mike. Lair. What's up, Mike? Hey, guys. How's it going, buddy? You look fucking great. You got a great setup here. Oh, uh, thank you. It's my new show. Weak, Weak as, fuck. as fuck with Michael Lair. It's beautiful. What a beautiful set. How can people find this show? <laughs> 
Um, I just made it up right now. It's <laughs> <laughs> a great name for a show. Yeah. Thank you. I was surprised it wasn't taken too. <laughs> yeah, that is incredible. That's great. Yeah, man. How'd that video go over? It was, great. It was awesome. As with every single, uh, ep- every single one of these quarantine episodes, the highlight of the show, as always. I love the production value you added in with some whoa look at that merch. Damn, look at that Michael Larapin. Wow, I'm gonna get one of those. MichaelLarapin.com. Yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Yeah. Hey, it's been a good week. Joe Berg's back. And um, it's tentative, but in the fall, I'm going to open for a rock band. They're called Lack of North America. I think that's the continent. But I'm going to open for them, and any of the band can do it with me. Because one of the man members in Shlilak is a big fan of mine. And he said I can open for them in Hollywood. And if he doesn't let me, I'm going to burn his whole life down. Hell yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. That's Shellac, C-H-E-L-L-A-C. What is it? I don't know, man. S-H-E. If it's not Does black, this guy's uh, name rhyme with Beam L. Steeny? I don't know, man. If it's not black guys um, talking in rhyme, I really don't give a fuck. But, you know, I'll do this for the uh, paper. <laughs> You're a big, uh, you're a fan of rap, right? Oh, yeah, I love rap music. <laughs> Who are some of your favorite rappers? Um, right now, um, Action Bronson mm-hmm. is my number one. Hey, I want to point out, I got disabled clothing on. Want to see? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> of course we yeah, do. Yeah, look. That's it's like your... Tommy Hilfiger. I'm their new model. They don't know it yet, but oh. it's called Tommy Adapting. And look, buttons, right? Yeah. Oh, oh no. Oh, <laughs> look at that. That's a real thing. Yeah. It looks like you're ready to uh, play, or not play, like roll through a tennis court. Yeah, I was afraid, I know, man. I, I was afraid you were going to break your buttons there, but. <laughs> no, it's magnet technology. Wow, oh, look at that. That's incredible. That's badass. I need a magnet. Yeah. Yeah, I you know how all my fans are either really hot gay guys mm-hmm. <laughs> um, chicks with dicks. Yeah. Absolutely. That's why yeah, I'm one of your so, biggest fans. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So I call them my daddies and <laughs> they buy me. It's like my daddy, Kanaka, bought me this from my <laughs> yeah. Absolutely. We love it when you call us daddy. I mean, they love it when you call them daddy. And they do, buddy. I don't know if you're being sarcastic, but they definitely no, I know. do. I know. I know. I love it. No, I was. But making, everything yeah. is to go. I'm gonna really be on America's God. <laughs> now is this true? There's been, there's been legitimate. I talked to a. Le- yeah. I can't, I'm not gonna say who, but I talked to a legitimate show business agent this week, 
and they asked me if that was true because they watched Kill Tony and yeah. they, it is. Well, first off, Tony, <laughs> I have legitimate show business agents too. You're not the only one who talks to them. Right. All right. And yeah. oh, yes, it's true. I've applied and I have a producer on the inside who's going to point me out. And I'm the American dream. And in the finals, it will be me, a puppeteer, and a guy who's glass. <laughs> wow. Sounds awesome. We got to get you on I more can. big sh- We got to get you on more big shows like that. How would you feel about signing up for perhaps Ninja Warrior? Yeah, well, my man. Um, we got to get me an analog chair for the water obstacles. Fuck yeah. <laughs> Got to throw some magnets on that thing. Figure it out. Just put one really strong magnet on the other side of the water. <laughs> yeah, man. Build the hoverboard. It's time for a hoverboard. That's Why right. aren't I hovering? Why do I even have to test the ground? That's true. Absolutely. If anybody knows anybody in the hoverboard business, hit up Michael Lair. We got to get the ball rolling on Hoverboards that. are a myth. Since Back to the Future 2, their myth, 25 years later, no hoverboards. No flying cars. They are impossible. No jetpacks. Yeah. No. Yeah. Michael Jackson. Well, what uh, hoverboard? <laughs> oh my God, you are covered in strings, Elliot. I have autism. Okay. Hey, can I show you something? You damn well know you can. Hopefully your pants have felt uh, Thank you. Um, uh, Brian, you say that you know everyone thinks we look alike. All right. <laughs> uh, um, oh, you stole that from my, 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 my studio. I just did I did for it. And I, I mean, it was a little weird. But my uh, Kill Tony favorite, Pat Griffin, Humber, a stand up comic pen. And remember, Brian, I told him, I love this. I feel like it's pop art. And (laughs) I'm like, she either got a free box of checks with this or got these pens free from morning box of checks. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah. Uh, That really is priceless. She left like five of them yeah. at the studio <laughs> wow that's pat and, griffin and, friends with nicole tran and speaking of studio uh michael lair is a special guest on dead air with brian holtzman tomorrow so we're, we're gonna have michael lair in the studio wow yeah man and in case you're wondering because everyone knows i saw my bike chain how i'm protecting myself Whoa, 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 whoa. Here it is, you motherfuckers. Whoa. <laughs> whoa, be careful. You almost cut one of your buttons off there. I have already been neutered. Please. Wait, how much How much did the uh, bike chain go for? I don't think we ever got a final think number. Was, what was it, 800? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> got to get you some more bike chains. Man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we got to do that again. And my... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, Ryan, um, if you pull on my Etsy, there are a lot of -of one-of-a-kind items. But um, this is the letter opener with a Wooly Mammoth phone handle. Wow. Wow. Wooly Mammoth. Look at that. 
Yep, what that is the doing? sound of a woolly mammoth. <laughs> he spent the whole eight hundred dollars on that. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, you bought that for eight hundred dollars. No, look, you silly! I brought medicine to keep me alive. Yeah, medicine, 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 medicine. Whatever you do, keep taking medicine, Michael. You look happier than ever. You did look happier than ever. <laughs> <laughs> you look like Steve Martin there. There you go. <laughs> yeah. uh, so, uh, Michael, we love you so much. You did it again. You steal the show every single week. You're fucking unbelievable. You're one of my favorite human beings of all time. Michael and I have been talking quite a bit uh, throughout the weeks, just off stage, you know, just hanging out, just being friends. Being cool. Mm. Talking <laughs> about shellac. You're goddamn right. And uh, he'll be opening mm. for shellac this fall, and uh, we're going to be back. We're going to be back soon. B things are opening up. Fuck yeah, hey. And yep. I'll go to... I'm going to... Anywhere is not snowing. I'm going to surprise you guys. And just show up at the show. If in you Boston did... in yep. August, yep. wherever. Yep. Because that's the most fun. And yep. I'm really killing it with the merchandise. I love it, dude. <laughs> I love it. Keep it up. You deserve it, so, dude. These people pay for quality. You, and and, they, and that's why they should all go to michaelaircomedy.com. This guy makes you laugh every single week. So get on. I love my fans. I love you guys. And you, and you take good care of them. There goes the great Michael Lair, everybody. Go to michaellaircomedy.com. Follow him. It's Steve Martian69. Michael Lair Comedy on Instagram. All right. Uh, your final comedian of the night goes by the name of Brandy Joe Collard. Back from that. Here's Brandy Joe Collard. So I grew up white trash, uh, and by white trash, like, I was so fucking poor. I got motherfucking spam in my stocking for Christmas one year. Uh, my mom has had a mullet my whole life, but in all honesty, she fucking rocks the shit out of her fucking mullet. Uh, my dad was, like, super fun. Like, I mean, so fun. He did Breaking Bad before Breaking Bad was a thing. He was, like, cooking up his meth in a camper closet down in the Carolinas. And here's the thing. If you do, like, something down south when you're white trash, as long as it's down south, it doesn't count. Um, so, um, and because I was white trash, I was a terrible judge of character. So, um, in high school, I had a best friend, Jenny D and I, we did a shit ton of pills together. Um, and, uh, Jenny was a shitty friend, but what happened to Jenny? What happened to Jenny D? Jenny D found herself a home in Georgia prison for murder. Wow. Murder. Oh, wow. <laughs> there you go. Brandy Joe Collard. <laughs> uh, Brandy Joe, how are you? I'm great. How are you? Great, great. Are you wearing a tutu? I'm literally wearing my prom dress that I wore um, when I was like was when I was 16 or whatever, and I'm wow. 29. Look at that. Killing the game. I love it. Little white trash princess over there. Why not? Absolutely. And where where are you in the world? Oh God! So castle. like, exactly. No, I wish. Um. Uh. White trash don't have castles. We just we just stack trailers up. Um, yeah, white castles. <laughs> <laughs> hey, no, Parker. I, um, <laughs> I live. <laughs> where are you? I live. On Side of Syracuse, um, but like I live in Liverpool because I don't really want to be associated with last week's Syracuse. <laughs> Syracuse, New York. Oh, yeah. God. I grew up. Um, I grew up in a really shitty ass town. Uh, I graduated with like sixty nine people. I I grew up like an hour from here in yeah. bumfuck nowheres. Um, yeah, it was it was it was fucking shot. I love so. that. And your mom has a mullet, huh? Mm -hmm. You have a yep. picture of her anywhere? Uh, I do. I'm trying to figure. Oh, actually, um, yeah. Steve, will you go grab me that? Um, 
Who's oh, yeah, you got a little servant. You really are a princess. How small is that person? Steve the <laughs> servant over here. That better not be a cat. I don't want to see you treating cats like that. There's a pile of pictures. Remember, I was going through all of them. There's nobody there. Fuck yeah. <laughs> what kind of pills were you on when you were a kid while Steve's grabbing the mom mullet pick? Other than birth control. Exactly. It's actually really funny. Um, I was really upset because I couldn't try and con I was unable to condense it down. Um, but my friend Jenny and I figured out this really good deal. There was this kid that would steal all his mom's Percocets and bring them in for us. And, like, we would just do a shit ton of Percocets in high school and be, like, high as a kite. And then, like, all she had to do was give him $5 worth of weed. Wow, what a deal. Right? And, like, I just, I kind of was just, like, the middleman kind of thing. And then so. did Jenny murder her boyfriend or the boyfriend's new girlfriend? No. So what ended up happening is, um, which I ironic is we grew apart because she told me that i was living my life too crazy yeah. um and she couldn't be a good mom and be friends with me but uh she left her family because she got addicted to heroin got caught up with this guy and then her and this guy took this old dude and all three of them were all like high and methed out trying to travel down you know road tripping as meth heads do and then the boyfriend got sick of that older guy and then hit him in the head with a rock and he died in uh, State Park in Georgia. Wow. And she was uh, accused. She was convicted of murder because she was just part of it. She was there. Yeah. So like, um, she's like an accomplice. Like she might see parole by like forty. Like I don't think she killed him. Like she was probably in the car. But yeah, that's part of being a murderer is that you don't really have to do it. You don't have to drop the rock. Right. Is... Exactly. So. One could say that that murder victim smelled what the rock was cooking, though. Uh, so let's see this mom yeah. with a mullet. That's always priceless. Uh, anytime we get a mom involved with the show, I, I love the thought of a mom with a mullet. Yeah, I'm thinking Theo Vaughn. Okay, so that's Theo a mom. picture of us. <laughs> wow. Right. Holy and shit. And then that's her mullet now. Oh, oh shit. She's just not dropping that mullet. God damn. That's like no, fucking. She uh, that's like, what's her name? Who's the uh, monster? Yeah, Shirley's. Eileen Warnos. Oh, yeah. I was thinking of who played Fuck her. Fuck, yeah. Your mom might be a murderer, too. Um. Yeah, that wouldn't be doubtful. So, Tony, I know you're a, you're a wrestling fan, right? Yep. My mom loved to, like, uh, Undertaker me and, like, WWE me. Um, Like, yep. she literally, like, slammed me to the ground one day and, like, decided to put me, like, in a headlock. Um, literally in the middle of town, just mm -hmm. like drag me to the car. Yeah, because that's how you discipline where I come from, apparently. Absolutely. That's, yeah. That, yeah. Mm -hmm. That explains why you look the way you look. What does that mean? It looks like she's been tombstoned one too many times. Why, why did what? What about her? Looks like she's been tombstoned. You know what? I'm a cat. I don't really no, get into not, these human sort of just, things. You don't get to just say random things and then say your character's description. Like we just spent two hours. We know you're a cat, but why? Then why are why, you asking me this? Why? You know? Why would she look like she's been tombstoned? She seems. She seems like a. She looks I mean, like a let me tell you something. For Syracuse, New York, that's an eleven right there. <laughs> I can only count up to three, so okay. <laughs> that might explain it. I, I love it. What do you do for work? Um. Well, actually, I got fired right before the quarantine started, and so I'm just, like, living the high life on unemployment. It's the first time I haven't worked since I was, like, 16. You were at a convenience so, store before that, a gas station of some kind, or a grocery store. Walmart. Am I correct? You what about cashier. her um, face okay, looks like no, that? Actually, you go ahead. Uh, I did car sales before that. I was a financial advisor before that. I was, uh, like, a social worker, home visitor thing. And I was a toddler teacher. Before that, I was a nurse's aide. Holy shit. Wow. You get fired a lot. <laughs> yeah. What you... No. No, I quit all those jobs. Wow. Now, let me ask you something. Both of your parents were very mullety parents we're talking about here. And I noticed that your name is Brandy Joe Collard, which sounds like the child of parents that have mullets. Uh, do you have you brothers and sisters? What? Ready for the kicker? Yes. My mom's Tracy Joe. Oh my God. <laughs> Tracy Joe, Brandy Joe, where are you? 
it. She's watching it right now, too. She's loving it. Do you have any brothers and sisters? I have a sister. Um, Her name's Jo-Jo? Jasmine. Just regular old Jasmine? No. Yep, I named her. <laughs> Thank God. Really? Oh, my yep. goodness. How'd you get to name her? That is the most white trash thing I've ever heard. <laughs> I can't think um, of a name, Brandy Joe. I'm you, gonna... got, you got two names and they didn't give Jasmine one. Okay, I'm going to tombstone you oh and then you're going to give me the first name that comes to mind after that. <laughs> What's your dad's name, Billy Joe? All right. Oh my God. I have autism. I'm a cat. <laughs> <laughs> You can't just play autism. <laughs> Mighty Joe. Joe. Thank you. I Randy joe has been on the show eight <laughs> minutes, and she's calling you out for your bullshit. Yeah, yeah autism, they have gifts and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I was an exceptional child. I was actually really smart, which is not good when you're white trash. I wish I was too stupid to know what was kind of going on. Right. That's always, always how it works. That's always how it fucking works. Two stupid people will make a genius child. Two ugly people make beautiful children. Two beautiful people make ugly children. It's all very backwards, this whole world. <laughs> that we live in it doesn't make any sense hot. actually i look exactly like my parents <laughs> <laughs> well what the is breed thing i don't know i don't know how to approach this exactly <laughs> are you saying your parents are <laughs> we're like the same breed and it's like oh breed oh your you're a dog yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh but i'm the idiot okay <laughs> Yo, this show we've been going too long. We're two hours in. Yeah. Shit's hitting the fan. Brandy, Joe, you are fun, man. I feel like we could talk to you forever. Actually, we haven't even touched the surface. I have so many stories for you. Like okay. I lost my car, car during quarantine. How'd you do that? So I woke up after I accidentally black got blackout drunk uh -huh. on, and I woke up on my couch. I'd gone to my friend my friend Barbara's house and we were just having like a little bit of wine night. And the next thing you know, I wake up in my couch on my couch in sweatpants. And as I'm recalling the night, I hear a knock on the door and there's a cop out there. And I don't know where my car is. And I don't know where my cell phone is. I don't oh know God. where my purse is. Oh I open God. the door. She goes, are you Brandy Collard? And I'm like, yeah. She goes, we have your purse. And I'm like, okay. She goes, you need to go pick it up here. Which I'm like, then why the fuck are you knocking on my door then? But right. she didn't like, I didn't have a ride and I couldn't tell her why I didn't have my car. So they're going to go get my wallet. I'm trying to figure out how the fuck I'm going to find my car, my cell phone, my wallet, also my rent money, $820 was in there and my weed was in my purse. So I was really hoping that the cop wasn't going to bring that purse back to me with it. I didn't really want to have to explain that because New York state, they don't really, they're not cool with it. Right. So, um. Thankfully, I get a hold of my friend Barbara. She's gonna come pick me up. Then the cop brings me my purse. It was not my purse, it was my wallet. The money's gone. Some crackhead in Syracuse had a fantabulous fucking afternoon, evening, whatever. So I have no idea where I lost my car. So we have to like, um, you know, go around Syracuse. What I remember was um, I was walking around the bad part of Syracuse, like Salina Street. Like, cause I, um, I look like I'm kind of a basic bitch, but I used to be the catch me outside girl before the catch me outside girl. I used to right. like have hoops and when I'm drunk. I think I can beat anybody. Right. So apparently I'm walking around. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. That's red band. Um, so <laughs> walk around. And so... <laughs> go ahead, Brandy Joe. Some Uber driver picked me up. Some random Uber driver had to pick me up and he brought me home. And that's kind of how I ended up home. But my car, I had to just search for like hours to find it. And it ended up just being on some random street. And that's like where my phone was. Um, and so apparently I decided to drive like 10 miles and just walk the ghetto of Syracuse. Somehow I didn't get shocks. It was not a good part of Syracuse. Um, lost my purse, lost all my rent money. Um, and that's shit. not the only time I've lost my car. Wow. And it's really hard to find a silver cart in Syracuse when you don't know where it is. 
Yeah. Go ahead, uh, Parker. The other day, this just reminds me of this day. I, it was a great night. I got this bone, and it was just like a regular like bone, like a treat, and I was so excited. I ran to the backyard. I buried the bone. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Next morning, I wake up on the couch, and I'm like, where's the bone? Where's I, the need, bone? I need the bone. <laughs> So anyway, my owner comes knocking at the door, and he's just like, hey, how you been? <laughs> you know, yeah. good girl, good girl. <laughs> and I'm just like, forget all about the bone. Next thing I know, I remember the bone. <laughs> so yeah. I go outside. I'm digging. I'm digging. I'm digging. It's a rainy day. It's not a good day for a dog to be outside. You found like, the bone. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Wow. She's like, <laughs> she's like the catch me outside yeah. girl, and you're like the walk me outside girl. I wish. Because <laughs> you're a dog. I yeah. want to express your anal glands. I need it. <laughs> wow. Dog People jokes. just laugh when I do that, but it's I actually really need that. Brandy dance. Joe Collard, again, I'll say it again. I could talk to you forever. I feel like you are an absolute well of uh, hilarious. I mean, I love white trash stuff. Me too. Um, I think everyone does. You know, you just can't really beat white trash. You know, out of all the... No, because our parents do. Exactly. Look at that. Brandy Joe, you did it again. She's you know, I, I always say white trash is the best out of all the worst of every race. Eat the white people are the best trash race. Does that make sense? Is there other we trash? We have the best no. trash, okay. the, the most extravagant yeah, exactly. trash. It's the best. It's a weird trash. way of bragging. Is, anyway, um, Brandy Joe <laughs> Collard. God, even your name. It's just like you didn't have to tell me your parents had mullets. Brandy Joe. Have you seen Tammy Joe? Anyway. I have an aunt Tammy. What was that? I do have an aunt Tammy. I love that. Brandy Joe Collar, yeah. thank you so much. She's on Twitter at Brandy Joe Schmo. Submit again sometime, Brandy. I want to hear more of you. Definitely. I want to talk with you again. She's on Snapchat at Brandy Joe Collard. That's Joe J O C O L L A R D. Um, let's let's bump Manolo to next week. This episode went a little bit long. Yeah. Uh, shout out to Manolo. He has a big, crazy submission. You know what? We're going to start next week's episode with Manolo. We're going to start with a closer just to get it bumping so that we have a, a Mexican guy that's funny at the top of the show next week. Guaranteed. Uh, Manolo will be back. He's the Manolo music. And from what I understand... He may have, you know, he's famous for having the Tijuana prostitutes on one episode doing comedy. And rumor has it in the rumor mill, what I heard from the producers today is that he submitted a new minute with someone that may be transgender and in Tijuana. How exciting is that? A Tijuana transgender prostitute. Just duct taped. I mean, (laughs) it's going to be really interesting to see. Uh, before we go and check out Ryan J. Belt's amazing artwork, let's check out some bad art. Uh, here's this week's bad art, which is, there it is. <laughs> that is bad. indeed wow. bad art. We all look bad in that. Jeremiah, frightening, <laughs> me. I mean, when have I ever looked like that? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. That mouth is pretty close. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just my janky mouth. Red everybody. band, like, spot on. That's not even yeah, a bad red that's, band. It's like King of the Hill or something. I don't know what that is. Yeah. That's pretty. What is, is that Joel? Yeah, that's Joel. <laughs> no, it's wow. the other guy with the dildo on his head and the gold leotard. Oh, my God. You yeah, like that's actually creature. actually a pretty good Joel. Pretty good Joel. I'm happy to not be a part of it. <laughs> hey, I, I'm glad, by the way, that that is actually a drawing. It, it, it was great. I want to clear something up. The last couple of weeks, we've had the same artist... Uh, Jesus, Jesus Christ! Christ. Well, that is why did you wait a second? Frightening! <laughs> that is frightening. That's that's the guy you're talking about, right? Batman. Oh, is this Xenomorph? the same guy? Yeah. Okay, so this is the same guy. So I I said, hey, you know, all you're doing is you're taking a photo, putting in Photoshop, putting filters on it, or redrawing yeah. it, or whatever. Yeah. And the guy called me out not only on Reddit, he made a thread like I drew oh, this, blah blah blah, and then on Twitter, but then. Uh, I didn't say anything because I've been joking. waiting. Look what I found. I found the exact clip art that he took it from. Wow. And he, and he oh just God. pretty much drew it over it. Wow. Like, so fuck you, dude. You're a tracer. Okay, okay, okay. We got you. We got you. You're a fucking tracer. Jesus. Red band and Photoshop wars with people. This is great. Okay, so there you go. That bad art was from Preston McGee. 
that frightening Tony and last week's trace drawing was from Batman <laughs> Xenomorph. Uh, what's going on? Is everything okay? What's going on over there? Okay. So uh, let's check in with Ryan J. E. Belt with tonight's artwork, everyone. Here we are. Oh, yeah. Ryan J. Wow. Look at that. Absolutely awesome. incredible. Oh, it's like Calvin and Hobbes. That is so yeah. awesome. There's a cat. I love a my dog. Cat. That's great. Me. Oh, look at Williams, that big uh, red guy on Bugs Bunny. <laughs> wow. <laughs> That's, cool. That's fucking badass, dude. Wow, right. that is so amazing. Can the people see that? Are you zoomed in on that? Yeah. That is great. RyanJEbelt.com for all the artwork, the new Kill Tony <laughs> t-shirt, the, all the Kill Tony posters, every drawing of every single episode, um, and uh, amazing art there, of course, as with every episode. RyanJEbelt.com. Hell yeah. Not traced. Drawn, drawn right. with his hand. Hand drawn during this episode. He did that sitting here while the last two hours of show happened. That is just incredible. Good job, Ryan. That outro music's playing. Yeah. Joelberg Joel Jimenez was here tonight. Believe it or not, that cat the entire time was Joelberg Joel Jimenez, a.k.a. Elliot. Joel, plug something. He -he. Well, I'm just happy to be back. It's very nice to be here with you guys. Guys, big news. My podcast, Mostly Sorry, drops tomorrow. We're premiering it at 6 o'clock p.m., uh, our time and nine, uh, yeah, nine o'clock Eastern time. We're gonna be in a live chat on YouTube. So look at mostly sorry. I'll put all the links on my Is Instagram. It audio and video. Uh, tomorrow's just the video. Oh, cool. uh, iTunes and Spotify coming. Uh, they're reviewing everything. So yeah. So you're on YouTube tomorrow. 6 tomorrow YouTube six p.m. our time, time. nine p.m. Uh, Eastern. Awesome. And uh, they follow uh... mostly sorry on Instagram. I'll post all my links there. But what, okay. But you don't know the YouTube channel? I think it's under Joel Jimenez. Okay. Well, they'll they'll do the math. Follow him on social media. I'll link media it on my Instagram. At Mostly Sorry. And the great Jesse Johnson was here tonight, everyone. <laughs> um, great to be here. This is my favorite character. I wish I could be a dog every week. I Shout out it. to all the dogs out there. I love it. All the dogs. It's a dog-eat-dog -dog world. It's rough. Jetski Johnson <laughs> on social media. Um, incredible, incredible, incredible times here tonight. Uh, yeah, my top secret project debuts in seven days, June 1st, 2020. Uh, and um, the Kill Tony quarantine email is killtonyquarantine at gmail.com. Kill Tony quarantine, all one word. Um, Red Band? Uh, yeah, check out tomorrow, Dead Air with Brian Holtzman, if uh, Michael Lair will be on there. And then, of course, hopefully David Lucas will be there Thursday for uh, Brothers and Cursive with William Montgomery. You can find both of those at uh, youtube.com slash redband or deathsquad.tv. Thanks a lot, guys. Keeps.com slash kill for your hair. ExpressVPN slash kill Tony for ExpressVPN and keep your tushy clean with hellotushy.com slash killtony to get 10% off of your order. We'll see you next week.